At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the San Francisco Giants. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by City, proud partner of the New York Mets. By Spectrum, hey Mets fans, join America's fastest growing TV, internet, and voice provider. Get the Spectrum Triple Play today. And by Mazda, driving matters. Last time the Mets and Giants got together, it was last October. A one game playoff for the wild card. Great pitchers duel between Madison Bumgarner and Noah Syndergaard broken up in the ninth on a Connor Gillespie home run against Jerry Familia, propelling the Giants forward in the postseason. And a pleasant good evening everybody and welcome to City Field Gary Cohen Ron Darling Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a three game series against the Giants so much has changed since last October not the least the fact that both starting pitchers in that wild card game are out for the long term the Giants are sitting at the bottom of the National League West what has gone wrong with this team uh, it's too long to even start to go at it but if you look at it they're not getting a lot of production from their outfield Angel Pagan retired he's a guy that really provided a lot of spark for them uh, when you think about Buster Posey he's sitting 356 but 26 of his 31 hits are singles he only has five RBI so their offense hasn't really done anything their starting pitching has struggled and their real strength of their team throughout those years when they won the World Series was their bullpen that's struggling also meanwhile the Mets say an injury and a controversy a day sitting at two games under 500 well you know they're six and a half back so it's not all lost right now uh, there's a lot of season left but care this was a team that was built to win and they're getting they're aging a little bit a little defense is a little bit up the middle I, th I think Walker's back is is bothering him. It's affecting his hitting. Reyes got off to a bad start. Two fifths of the rotation is in the tank. Uh, so a lot of things happen. That's why they got 25 guys. You go into a season with great expectations. Injuries are the wild card in the deck. The Mets have been scoring runs. Uh, kind of an erratic, inconsistent sort of season. Uh, who would have thought that this starting rotation that at the end of April one week into May there only be two guys with two wins and of course half the Mets projected starting lineup is out as well so the pitching match tonight Jacob deGrom who had a rough one the last time out but has been really the stalwart in this rotation he has but two of the last three starts uh, he's walked five in those starts something you've never seen his last start four right handers he walked but they're expected uh, I think that deGrom is going to turn it around at some point and pitch the way he's capable of pitching and for the Giants the lefty Matt Moore who's had his old problems he had a no hitter last year two outs until the ninth inning he did not get the no hitter since then on the road Matt Moore's ERA is 12 and a half that is too high for a guy with his talent and the Dodgers roughed him up knocked him out of the fourth inning his last time out so it's the Mets and Giants two teams trying to get right in flushing for the first of three all the action coming your way on SNY.
Call on SNY is brought to you by the State Farm agent of the game, John Garfinkel of Brooklyn. Contact John at johngarfinkel.com. By City, learn about City Perks at Mets.com slash City. And by Optimum, for the best offers on TV, Internet, and phone, visit Optimum.com. Get to City Field Friday, May 19th. The Mets play the Angels at 7.10 p.m. All fans in attendance will receive an up-the-middle Neil Walker and his Dribble Cabrera t-shirt, courtesy of M&M's. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Free Shirt Fridays. Unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile, and it was nearly unlimited baseball last night at Wrigley Field. The Yankees and Cubs played for six hours and five minutes, 18 innings before Aaron Hicks scored on a ground ball in the 18th. 48 strikeouts not only broke but obliterated the major league record for most strikeouts. Yankee pitcher struck out 22, uh, 26, and Cub pitcher struck out 22. Mm. And the Yankees swept that three-game series from the Cubs. Who are now just a game over 500. Here it's the Mets and the Giants. First pitch is coming right up. The view from right behind Stu Sherwater, our young home plate home tonight. I can't say that I ever wanted to be an umpire, Gary. I wanted to be a big league player. Well, you were. Oh. So <laughs> there you go. It worked out well for you. It's the Giants' starting lineup tonight. Joe Panic back home in New York. Christian Arroyo, the rookie, playing shortstop. Maybe not his best position. Connor Gillespie, who broke the Mets' hearts last year, in the lineup at third base. Well, Jacob DeGrom's Land Rover numbers, no one's been any better than he has been at City Field. His record 16 and 11 in 40 career starts, ERA under two. First pitch to Joe Panic is on the inside corner of strike, and we're underway. Panic, who grew up in uh, the northern suburbs, went to John Jay High School in East Fishkill, has thrived playing here at City Field. It's a lifetime 370 hitter in this ballpark. No John Carlos Stanton, but he knows how to hit in this yard. A little different hitter. 
Panic hitting at 291 for a Giants team that is dead last in the National League in home runs and runs scored. And DeGrom strikes him out on three pitches to start the night. All fastballs upstairs. Chased Ronnie. Well, first fastball was inside, second one was up and in, third one out of the strike zone. So DeGrom, who had a three game streak of striking out 10 or more and in his last start, has a strikeout to start his night. And now Brandon Belt hitting second in the order. I don't know why. I know that the new philosophy is, you know, then the two hole, more chances to drive in runs, you get up more. Belt is not a two hitter for me. He's more like a a four or five hitter, maybe more of a five spot hitter. Well, what he has been doing is getting on base via the walk. He's drawn 23 walks this year. He hasn't hit much, but his on base percentage is a healthy 366. Yeah, he's three for his last 24 in his last seven games. So 234. He's there with four home runs, 36 strikeouts, 23 walks. Go figure. That's out of the full shift on against him with Flores playing in shallow right. In the middle of the triangle, and DeGrom gets ahead on Belt one and two. Jake had one of his worst ever starts in San Francisco last summer. The last time he faced the Giants, gave up eight runs and 13 hits after having dominated the Giants in his first three career starts against them. One, two to Belt, and he checks the swing on the slider down low, two and two. This is a Giant team right now after losing. Three games in Cincinnati by a 31 to 5 margin. Mm. They are prime pickings right now when you're playing them. 31 to 5, huh? 31 to 5. 31 to 5. That's hard to believe. 2 2 coming. And Belt lays off and he stopped the swing in time. Lance Barrett with the call 3 and 2. The, the 26 run margin against the Giants in that three game series was their widest margin. Of defeat in any three game series since 1894. <laughs> really? 1894, they played the Boston Braves and were outscored by 26 or more. That was the last time before this past weekend in Cincinnati yeah. against the first place Cincinnati Reds. That's right. That's before Bill Terry. <laughs> before, Slightly? <laughs> before John McGraw. <laughs> It was before the polo grounds. Here's a 3 2 on the way, and it's outside. Belt has drawn another walk. It's 24th of the season, and the Giants have the first base runner of the night. Man, the Met Lexus defense, Juan Lagares' sixth start in center field. He always gets the starts against the left handers in center. Cespedes down. Rivera playing first base again. He's become a fixture there. Wilmer now with Cabrera hurt. He's going to get more playing time. He's at third, and Renee behind the plate. Now, as Dribble Cabrera was not placed on the disabled list today, the Mets flew in Gavin Cicchini from the West in order to be ready in case Cabrera was DL'd, but he checked out well enough today that they're going to keep him active. Here's Hunter Pence taking outside for ball one. The other the player move the Mets did make today, they activated left hand pitcher Tommy Malone, whom they got on waivers from Milwaukee. He's here. They sent Adam Wilk back to the minors after his ill fated start yesterday. Malone may start on Wednesday afternoon instead of Rafael Montero. And the uh, the best we can figure is that Matt Harvey, who returns from suspension tomorrow, will pitch Friday night in Milwaukee. Probably throw a bullpen tomorrow um, to get ready for that start. Oh boy, Rolades for for Terry. Give him to Davy and give him to Terry. <laughs> 2 0 to Pence, and Hunter takes a strike. Hunter Pence off to a slow start, hitting just 254 with two home runs. Pence is now 34 years old and has missed substantial portions of the last two years because of injury. Still very much the heart and soul of this Giants team. And this is a guy who's used to playing 162. 106 games last year. And now DeGrom, who has had walk trouble recently behind on Pence, three and one. 17 walks this year for DeGrom in 37 innings pitched. That's a high number. And all you kids out there, uh, notice this young man here, Mr. Pence, choking up on the bat. 
run an inch. Now it's Al Tip, three and two. Well, you're getting hitters counts. You got to challenge him with a fastball. It's supposed to be in. Goes more down the middle. Pence pulled off of that pitch just enough. Buster Posey, who's been the Giants' best hitter by far this season, is waiting on deck. Dalt at first and one out. He's running. And Pence slams one to deep right center. Lagaris back to the warning track. Back at the wall. He can't get it. It's a home run. Hunter Pence with a two run homer, his third of the year. And the Giants are off to a fast start. It's 2 0 San Francisco. Well, so much for those five runs in Cincinnati over the weekend. Well, he pulled off of the 3 1 pitch, but he did not. He stayed on that and drove it the other way on 3 2. Balls up, wants it in, middle again, Ron, and up. And just out of the reach of Lagaris. Talk about, here it is again, right here, just out of his reach, not much. Here's another peculiar statistic Posey's hitting 356 running. Only has five RBIs. How does that happen? 26 of his 31 hits are singles. And there have not been many people. Not been a whole lot of traffic in That's front right. of him. Posey fourth in the National League with that 356 average. Had a real scare early this season. Got hit in the head by a Taiwan Walker fastball and missed six games mm. with concussion like symptoms. But right back in there. Posey, the former MVP, now 30 years old. He rolls one down to first. And TJ Rivera makes the play for the second out. Well, we're going to show you Pence's home run again from the side here. Big leg kick, big stride. But notice the balance. Now, he's the kind of guy you just would not mimic or teach his swing. He's a very awkward hitter, but you know, it's all about squaring it up. And uh, he gets it done. He's had a marvelous career. He only knocked his own helmet off <laughs> in the course of hitting that home run. Well, I was just thinking, Hunter Pence probably is awkward, but I bet you if you did any test for hand eye coordination, he'd probably be on top of the heap. Gets the bat to the hitting zone at the right time. It's all that matters, right? Here's the rookie, Christian Arroyo, who was called up a couple of weeks ago after tearing up Triple A. He was hitting 446 at Sacramento. Hitting 255 and 51 at bat since his call up. Just 21 years old. And he takes a strike. The uh, regular shortstop, Brandon Crawford, is on a rehab assignment tonight, trying to come back from a groin injury. And they say that Crawford could be back as early as tomorrow. DeGrom ahead, one and two. And Arroyo strikes out to end the inning. A couple of strikeouts for DeGrom, but in between, a walk and a Hunter Pence two run homer put the Mets in an early hole. Two nothing Giants.
NY Studios. Very posh. Must be nice. SNY headquarters. headquarters. We're getting big league now. We moved down what downtown. Is, what is it? The FBI? <laughs> I was thinking control. Yeah, right. As opposed to chaos. Got the cone of silence in there. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> they send us what they want us to talk about, then it explodes after five seconds. <laughs> That's Mission Impossible. <laughs> 2 0 to Michael Conforto. There's Matt Moore making the start for the Giants tonight. Well, the, the numbers represent really his season. He's had two good starts, but four of them he's given up five runs or more. One of his last starts, he gave up nine runs. Conforto just nine at bats against left hand pitching so far this year. And quickly ahead on the count, 3 0, TJ Rivera and Jay Bruce to follow. Left handers hitting 355 off of Moore, 11 for 35. And a leadoff walk on four pitches. So Conforto's aboard, and that'll take us to the Geico Mets starting lineup. Wilmer Flores hitting cleanup against the lefties. Why not? He's got a higher slugging percentage than anybody in baseball the last three years against lefties. Juan Lagares getting the start in center field. Granderson sitting against the left hander. Rene Rivera still in there. Travis Darno on the disabled list. Here's TJ Rivera making his 10th straight start at first base. Lucas Duda DH'd on rehab for Port St. Lucie last night. He's going to play first base tonight as he tries to work his way back from the elbow injury. As Moore misses with the breaking ball. 14 walks in 33 and a third, Ronnie. That's way too many, and you mix in those 20, 38 hits, and that's a lot of base runners. You got to be patient. He uh, has always been a guy that has struggled with control. A guy whose second major league start was in the postseason with Tampa Bay in 2011. Really rushed him to the big leagues, had some instant success, then went down with Tommy John surgery, and really has not been the same pitcher since the Tommy John. Uh, the surgery in 2014. Since then, he's 17 and 20 with a 4.67 ERA. Mm. And he misses with that fastball somewhere, two and one. Nope. Um, that's uh, those are stark. Those numbers as he's tried to come back. That start that you talked about was a gem against the Texas Rangers. Seven scoreless innings. New Mexico High School Baseball Player of the Year. Yeah, he had an interesting childhood. Well, his dad was in the Air Force. He was born in Florida, lived in Okinawa for a period of time as a kid before they settled in New Mexico. An older brother who pitched for the University of New Mexico. Eighth round pick by Tampa Bay in 07, still only 27 years old. Two and two to Rivera with Jay Bruce on deck. And that's inside the full count to TJ. He's been a little more selective over these last couple of weeks as he gets the chance to play more. But he still likes to jump on that first pitch. When there's men on base, he likes to jump on that first pitch. Harrod's ball inside. When I watch TJ play, I'm trying to come up, the word I come up with is fearless when I watch him play. You'd have to be as an undrafted free agent making it to the big leagues. Conforto at first and nobody out. Not running, and Rivera strikes out on the sinker for the first out. Well, fastball hitter, he beat him with. That's got a lot of plate too. It's just down. It was interesting. It's right before that pitch. The sun off the right field offices uh, shone right in Posey's face and T.J. Rivera. There's the sun when I was talking about. You get that for a few minutes every night at this time of the year. Sun is sun is something that comes out that's nice and warm. Yeah, every once September in a while. you get it a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. September it gets really bad. Here's Jay Bruce who's hitting just 156 against lefties. He cracks that one down the line foul. Oh. Gotta work on that backhand. <laughs> now we'll get the Coors light giant defense. Dordo Nunez in left field. He's third baseman. Uh, Gorky Hernandez in center that shows how depleted the Giants are we talked about Christian Arroyo the youngster at shortstop and the perennial all star there behind the plate Buster Posey the Giants have really had to mix and match in that outfield 
You've got uh, Denard Spann on the disabled list, Jared Parker, who was supposed to be their left fielder on the disabled list, and curiously, Angel Pagan, who was such a stalwart for that team for the last few years, sitting home. Hmm. Nobody signed him. Going to to Bruce with Wilmer Flores on deck. And it's in tight. That was a good pitch by Moore. 0 2. Almost had a chance for that to cut back over the inside corner. Haven't seen a lot of breaking balls from him yet. Cutter's become a much more prevalent pitch for him. 24%. He's thrown that pitch this year. There's another one. And Bruce fouls it away. Cutter inside is such a precise pitch because if you make the pitch the hitter almost has no chance to, to swing at it because it starts right at him. But boy if you make a mistake it's almost invariably always over the heart of the plate. One two coming and the dirt and Posey able to block it. That was lefty lefty change up there by Matt Moore. Not even close. Two two coming. And Bruce lines one base hit. Just over Arroyo's outstretched glove. And the Mets have two men on. Nice There's hitting. a hit for Bruce against the lefty. Nice hitting by Jay. He stayed in behind the count. Here comes the breaking ball. You stay in. You know, it's a flat slider around mid thigh. But you pull off, you're dead. The, the last three or four games, Jay Bruce has worked the middle of the field, even gone the other way more than we've seen him in April. So now it's Flores. See Wilmer's overall numbers, but against the lefties, it's as per usual, hitting 385 with a couple of home runs already. <laughs> it's over 13 at bats. Well, we mentioned Wilmer has a higher slugging percentage against lefties than any other player in the majors over the last three years. Second on the list. Nelson Cruz yeah. third on the list Ryan Zimmerman fourth on the list Chris Bryant so he's up there in elite company. Yeah. I mean those guys have enjoyed more success against righties but Wilmer has found his his niche. And it takes the curveball for a strike. This is my opinion though I think if Wilmer played more against righties. I think he'd hit against righties too. He wouldn't have the slugging percentage that he got, does against lefties. But Wilmer, Wilmer's just a hitter. Down in the count here against Moore. Conforto at second, Bruce at first. Mets down two nothing in the first inning. And Flores lays off. One and two. Well, gold glove for Posey last year. See how he turned that glove over. Um, he is one guy that has gotten better since he's been in the major leagues defensively. He was an infielder in college and had to learn how to catch late. Giants had two first time gold glovers last year Posey and Joe Panic both won gold gloves for the first time. That's drilled down the left field line by Flores toward the corner. Foul. Wilmer likes that ball down middle in off those lefties. Begs the question why do they keep throwing that pitch? He wanted it away. Oh, that's why. Wilmer trying to influence it. Not quite a fisky and wave, <laughs> but a nice little hop. He got in the spirit of it. Conforto will lead off walk. Bruce a one out single. Neil Walker is hitting fifth in the order tonight. He's on deck. That's for holding just one hit yesterday. They've already equaled that today. And Wilmer drives one out to right center, chasing Hernandez back, but he'll get there. And Conforto will stay at second. Two out. 
tonight's Verizon trivia question. Before Joe Panic and Brandon Crawford, who were the last pair of middle infield teammates to win Gold Glove, are we sang in the same season. Yeah, we have to be. Yeah, has to be. National League. It's a great question. Here's Neil Walker with two out and two on. And he swings over the change up, nothing and one. Think of, there's nobody who jumps out at me. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm working back from the 80s because I, I would think that maybe the pair in St. Louis did it a couple times. What Ozzy and uh, her. Tommy her. I mean, and, you know, the, to me, the American League guys jump out at me like uh, Alomar and Vizquel or, or Whitaker mm. and Trammell. Those guys. Dave over there said uh, we'll never get it. He has very little confidence in us. He's like the character in the Lilliputians. You'll never make it. I, I think he's providing incentive, guys. Okay. Hmm. They told them they could never get it. And yet, they persisted. Huh. It's not uh, for you. Utley, Utley and Rollins? Ooh. I don't Did think Utley, Utley ever win one? I don't think so. Uh, San Francisco's here. Rebay and Robbie Thompson. Don't forget another thing too. It's, it could be a. Uh, I, I don't think it is, but <laughs> don't forget that Houston was in the National League. We can't forget them. So don't don't don't. Well, don't write them off. Don't write them off. What shortstop would have? I know. Biggio might have won one at second, but Biggio. But who would have won one at short? Not since uh, Dickie Thon was never a Gold Glover. No. Going back that far. Boa and Sandberg. No. Walker gets oh. jammed. Well, they cut her by Moore, and it's three and two. Dunstan and Sandberg. I'm just trying to think of guys of one. How Walker current is it? Is it current? It's one. since 2000 for the viewers. Well, we got, okay. we got a hint. Since 2000. So, so that wipes out uh, Sandberg and that crowd. Hmm. The Mayhew won in Colorado, but now the shortstop. Not shortstop. Three two runners will go. And Walker drives one of the gap in right center field. Pinch racing back. He won't get it. It goes off the wall and over the wall. That'll cost the Mets a run. Had the ball stayed in play, two runs would have scored easily. But on the ground rule double, Bruce will have to go back to third. It's a run scoring double for Neil Walker to cut the Giants' lead to two to one. Fastball up and away. No command so far. Right down the outer half. Up. No command for more. Keith, it's really the same pitch that Pence hit for a two run home run. Yep. Fastball up and away. Ball just crept up off the top of the wall and over to cost the Mets a run. Reyes will try and get it back. We'll say at 193 on the year. Second and third and two out. And he takes the cutter for a strike. Reyes has had the most at bats by far of any Met against Matt Moore. He's only one for nine against them. Of course, they were in the same division when Jose was in Toronto and Moore was in Tampa Bay. Down and in, one and one. Seeing more, that's why he's having difficulties. This is a lot of pitches, 29 pitches. Jacob DeGrom gave up the two run homer in the first. He's had plenty of time to watch and rest as the Mets have batted. And the changeup misses badly, and it's two and one. Did Fonzie ever win a gold glove? I was thinking the double play combo for the Dodgers. Alex Cora, who is their shortstop? Oh. He's one of the brothers. Right. Yes. Um, it's tourists. It's tourists. Cesar is tourists. Yeah. That 
That's a good call. They were great. I don't know if they both won gold gloves. Backdoor curve in there, and it's two and two. Mm. Well, you normally think of the Mets and Giants as pitching rich starting rotations, but right. not so far this year. Oh. The ugly. With a Y? <laughs> yes, that's how bad it is. <laughs> Usually Cincinnati wears the crown there. Oh, uh, and they're they wearing got, it right now. Got the ballpark for it. 2 2 coming, and Reyes fouls it off. And the inning continues. Moore is all over the place. Up. For every one good pitch he makes, he makes three pitches either in the dirt or up in the strike zone. Mr. Rigetti. 17 years. Bay Area guy. I believe San Jose is where yeah. David grew up. 17 years with one organization as a pitching coach is a lot. Of course, they've had a lot of stability in their front office, yes. their manager. Winning three World Series in the same decade will do that. That helps. Uh, yeah, that helps. What a hard working first inning for Matt Moore about to throw his 34th pitch. A walk a single a double. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming to Reyes. It was just two for 18 as a right hand batter so far this year. And Jose slashes one foul. Thirty four pitches in the first inning yesterday Jose Urania had thirty four pitches in the fourth. Inning. That's right. What a game he pitched by the way. Probably could have gone deeper than the six he pitched. Again the two two and wow. just got a piece of that as it ran in on. Him. You know Matt Moore was always known before the Tommy John surgery he was a swing and miss pitcher. Not the same. I mean there was a time he was throwing 96 97 those days are gone now. He but he was conveniently wild there. Now, now he's he's more predictable wild so. Uh, high pitch counts. Bruce at third Walker at second ninth pitch of the at bat coming to Jose Reyes. And Reyes lifts one to center field. Coming in Hernandez. And that retires the side. Mets will settle for the one run on the Walker double. Two to one San Francisco after one. Every out of market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices, plus get a free subscription to Add Bat Premium 
Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Second inning, two to one Giants. Eduardo Nunez will lead off against Jacob DeGrom, who gave up a two run homer to Hunter Pence in the first inning. <coughs> That Nunez was. acquired by the Giants last year at the trading deadline from the Twins after making the All-Star game last year. Mm. Giants have only stole stolen 11 bases as a team and Nunez has seven of them. They really miss Pagan's energy at that top of that order. Angel Pagan that is. Two and out of Nunez. Long lean Jacob DeGrom. And Nunez pops it up. Reyes out, Conforto in, and Conforto takes charge of it. One out. You know, DeGrom's uh, interesting when he stands on the mound and gets ready to pitch. Yeah, Andy Pettit, right? Hides his face in his glove. And I always say to myself, I'm surprised more guys don't do that. Why? Well, what did you watch when you're Jacob DeGrom when you're a kid when you watch the Yankees in the postseason all the time it was Pettit with that stare. I was always partial to the Dave Stewart scowl. Oh boy. Yeah Pettit had a huge glove because he was trying to hide that little change up that he threw. Well DeGrom was an infielder so he has a smaller. Feels more comfortable with a smaller glove. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Connor Gillespie, who haunted the Mets last October. Hit the three run homer in the ninth inning off Jerry's Familia to break up the scoreless wild card game and became an instant Giants hero. Instant after uh, being drafted by the Giants eight years earlier, going to two other organizations and coming back to the Giants. And he had his big moment here at City Field. In the wild card game. Yeah, under uh, Robin Ventura, when he was the manager of the White Sox, it looked like Gillespie was going to have his chance with the White Sox. He was there for a couple of years, never stuck, didn't hit enough, and had that incredible hit against the Mets. Uh, this one to center field. Lagaris coming on, and that's the second out. Well, shield your eyes if you want to, but no. this was last October. It's scoreless game, ninth inning. And Gillespie, the least likely hero. Gary, Met fans love to torture themselves. They were wide eyed watching that at home. But I remember that blow, I do. Do you remember where you were when that happened? I wasn't here, I don't believe. We were sitting at the desk outside. That's uh, right. Waiting for the post game show. Right. <clears throat> Cold. As usual. Not as cold as 2015. That was the coldest postseason ever on that set. How about those lo lovely digs for us in Kansas City? <laughs> the trailer? <laughs> one on one to Gorky Hernandez. For that beautiful set we had. Well, we had like two people in the background <laughs> and like the back of the stadium. It was great. Doing one to Hernandez. Well, the Giants won 87 games, and after they beat the Mets, they ran into the Cubs, and they just were roadkill in the face of the Cubs' yeah. World Series run. I mean, what's not there is that they had a record most in baseball blown saves last year for the San Francisco Giants. Well, that's that's why, why it was such an uphill battle for them. That's why they went out and got Mark Melanson in the offseason, and Lanson then properly blew a save on opening day, which kind of set the tone for their season. The way it's gone so far at 11 and 21. Right. Kind of set the tone for Arizona. As ball four, and Hernandez is on with a two out walk. Second walk for DeGrom, who continues to walk far more than he's accustomed to. I, I, I say this because I used to do this. That's a concentration walk right there. Eighth place hitter. Uh, you know, Gorky's Hernandez, good solid player, but he's not going to scare anybody. Uh, there's no reason that that walk should come about in front of the pitcher. Matt Moore, four for 47 in his career, one for nine this year. Well, consider this um, DeGrom's walked five batters in two of his last three starts. Before that, he had walked five only once in his career, and it came in his third career start mm. back in 
2014. And you know there's. There's pressure on every starting pitcher every time he goes to the mound but when you're supposed to be one of five aces. And right now you're really the, the one. It's got to feel a little more. Monumental every time you take the hill. More pops one up. And that'll go out of play which is good because Rene Rivera <laughs> had no idea where it was. You know Gary I think sometimes you get ahead of yourself and you start to think you. You know when you lay your head on the pillow the night before boy I want to go out and throw seven shutout innings tomorrow. Can't think that way. You really have to think about it. I'm going to put a zero up in, in the first frame. And then work from there. Stay in the moment. Sometimes you almost put too much pressure on yourself. Also I think. You know, he's got a new arm with the post surgery and. And. He's thrown awful hard. But I wouldn't say he's been able to refine it like he has in the past. Well do you think after the nerve transposition surgery that he had which obviously yeah. now he's got less pain which probably is part of why he's throwing so hard you have to relearn how to command your pitch. Well I think he feels one completely unfettered but also his breaking ball is a little different than it was before. So you have to relearn where to throw it where to concentrate on aiming it. Third strike after DeGrom as he fans his opposing number two to one Giants as we go to the bottom of the second. Answer Mets trivia. Just follow SNY on Twitter during the fifth inning of tonight's game for details on how to enter the SNY fifth inning sweepstakes presented by your local Ford dealers. Part of the cloudy evening turning into night. Temperature still in the 50s. When is that going to end? Oh, who knows? Went out this morning with a little guy. It was did not have the right clothes on. Renee Rivera leads off in the home second against Matt Moore. Rivera over the last four games eight for 17 his batting average over 300 for the year not a place he's accustomed to being. Moore threw 36 pitches in the first inning. And now ball and a strike to Rivera. Juan Lagares on deck then Jacob DeGrom in the second. That's a good pitch. That's his best uh, slider yeah. so far. Yep. Not a strike. No. Tough to lay off though. One two coming. 
And the breaking ball hit out to center and Hernandez easing back. One out. <laughs> Matt Moore called him out. Sorry, Gary, because he he threw one good breaking ball, and then that one was a hanger. So Posey uh, letting him know uh, what that ball is doing when he's trying to catch it. Now Juan Lagares making his sixth start of the season. Mets have only faced Matt Moore once before. That was last August 20th in San Francisco, and Mets beat him that day. He gave up three runs in five innings. It was his next start after that that he went to Dodger Stadium and took a no hitter to two out in the ninth mm -hmm. inning. I think it was Corey Seager who broke it up, if I remember correctly. And since that start at Dodger Stadium last August 25th, Ronnie gave the numbers in the, in the, in the open tonight. He's made six road starts since then. One in five, 12.34 on the road since that start. And the last start he made was at Dodger Stadium when he gave up nine runs inside of four innings. Oh, oh got him. Garris is drilled. So after a series against the Marlins that was chock full of hit batsmen, there's the first one in this game. Well, that's what Keith was talking about a lack of command, a lack of an idea. 0 2, he's trying to go up and in and knock him off the plate and drills him in the ribs. Brandon Belt into the mound to talk about bunt defense, which not necessarily in order here with yeah. Rom at the plate. Lefty lefty matchup. I think though, down run. That Degrom to me is one of your best bunters. I'd like to see him lay one down. Has three hits and one sacrifice so far this year. Gillespie in on the grass at third. And lays down a nice bunt. <coughs> well, we'll have to go to first with it. One to four on the sacrifice, and there's Degrom's second sacrifice of the season. He's a good bunner. He's a good athlete. He deadened it nicely. Watch bad head is out in front. Moves it back a little bit, but then moves it forward so it's in front of the plate. I'd like to see him pinch that bat a little more. See the bottom finger? It's down around the bottom. Something could, you know, clip the end of his finger. So you want to really pinch it. So that finger doesn't stick out, but that's great form. That's David Cohn. Yeah, David Cohn. Sent Candlestick Park. There goes the pennant. Adley Hammaker. Adley Hammaker, you're right. Michael Conforto walked on four pitches, scored a run on the first. At Adley had good stuff. He did have good Too stuff. Too hard. Bounce straight down one and one. Well, that was that no hit bid against the Dodgers that fell just short. He threw more pitches in that game than any pitcher threw in any game in the majors last year. Wow. Wasn't quite Edwin Jackson no hitter pitch count. What one, do you have? 149? I was going to say, yeah, 140 something. What was uh, Johans? 134? Yep. With extenuating circumstances. It's interesting since Johan, which is what five years ago. Yeah. The incidence of pitchers being pulled with no hitters going has gone up exponentially. Yeah, he's the he's kind of the uh, the tipping point. Right. You know, nothing is coming close to what Johan did on that June first night. Although more came close. Of course, Moore is a much younger pitcher than Santana was in 2012, although he's got history with Tommy John surgery just two years prior to that 133 pitch effort. 17 pitchers last night averaged over 100 pitches per start last year. That's the least amount in the 21st century. So we just don't, guys are not getting to over that 100 pitch mark because, anymore. Because they can't? Because they because won't allow them. They right. won't allow them as right. They can. Conforto strikes out. The shortstop Arroyo was at the second base bag, but Conforto waving at a pitch out of the strike zone, and Moore has his second strike out of the night. 
Mosley moving off the plate, and Conforto chases. Third inning, Joe Panic leads off of the Giants against Jacob DeGrom. Panic struck out on three pitches to start the game. Second time through the order for DeGrom. And he gets the curveball in for a strike, one and one. Sorry, I wasn't on the headset there. My mother called me. I'm having dinner with her on Friday night because of Mother's Day, so I had to answer it and tell her very quickly that. We're gonna have dinner on Friday. Apologize, guys. How this is how was mom. Do, how's mom doing? She's doing fantastic. Um, they were they went through a little bad spell there, but they play go, they played golf today. Mrs. So they're really excited. Nice. Yeah. Mrs. Darling, you're not watching your son. <laughs> they, they don't they don't get well, it some way up, in, up uh, there. Yeah, they're up in in Mass. Oh, I thought I thought well they they, they have they have they're they, watching the Sox. Yeah, they get Ness in there. <laughs> Panic strikes. <laughs> Well, I was fortunate enough to spend yesterday evening with my mom, who was celebrating her 85th birthday. Oh, congratulations! Congrats! That was, wow. that was very cool. My two sisters and I took her out to dinner. Where'd you guys do? Where'd you go? In the city? In the city. Nice. Yeah. Took only an hour and 45 minutes to get from City Field to the east side of Manhattan. <laughs> Sunday geez. night, the traffic. Yeah. Of course. I mean, brutal craziness. Brandon Belt drew a walk and scored a run his first time up. So we're throwing a little bit. Yeah. So we were talking about the ground before. Um, you know, when he was at his best, he was able to hit the bottom of that strike zone a lot, right? He is up in the strike zone for the most part of this year. That now, that's thigh high. But I'm talking about knees is where he used to be. Now, there is an argument that a lot of pitchers are starting to pitch more up in the strike zone because hitters are trying to hit fly balls. Does that make sense to you for a guy like DeGrom? I don't think so. I, I think yes, uh, he might get more strikeouts. But in this today's game, you've got to be able to minimize your pitch count if you want to be an elite pitcher who goes seven or eight innings. The change up to strikeout belt. Back to back strikeouts for DeGrom. In fact, three in a row, he's now got five for the night. Boy, that was a good change up. Best one of the night for DeGrom. Um, he has thrown that slider more 
He's thrown the change up less. I think it's a mistake. I think his change up is such an outstanding pitch. He should use it more. So halfway to double digits tonight. He already has three double digit strikeout games this year. Here's Hunter Pence who fouls one back. The one thing you'll see from overhead here is the long stride about as long a stride as you see from anyone in baseball all arms and legs he comes at you like a like a whip and in a straight line which was such a concern for him yeah. last year well he 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 can as most pitchers start to cross the line throw, throw across your body which doesn't clear your hips oh two to Pence struck him out oh. Jacob DeGrom strikes out the side in the third inning. So he's hitting his stride. Four consecutive strikeouts for DeGrom. Six for the night. That's down a run in the third. Last middle infielders to win National League Gold Gloves together for oh, Vina. One time played for the Mets and Edgar Renteria. You're right. We never would have got that. That's that's really, really hard. I mean, I have to tell you folks at home, we really tried to get that. We were we actually mentioned Renteria while we were off the air, maybe with Luis Castillo, Castillo. in in Florida, but oh well. Yeah. Well. T.J. Rivera struck out his first time up and fouls that one into the ground. One and one. This is something that I noticed over the years with Belt at first base. The Giants defense Belt really plays the hole, takes away the right hand hitters, takes away that hole. I used to play over there. I always like to see that. Ken Boyer told me a long time ago you're going to get beat more in a hole than you are down the line. Do you have to have a lot of confidence in your ability to get back to the bag in order to play that far away? You've got to be on your toes and you've got to break quick uh, as fast as you can to get to that bag. And that's something that I worked on with uh, the left, left side of my infield. And I always would yell to them, uh, Ralphie, whether it was Ralphie or Hojo or Ray Knight, I would yell to them and say, I'd point to myself and I'd point to the bag. So they knew. I was going to be there a little tardy. They got a routine ground ball. They had plenty of time. 
And also you can get further off with the slower runner gear yeah. at the plate. Did you want them to wait for you to be to the bag. Well they had to. That throw to the bag. Sometimes I got there. there. I would get there on the run sometimes. I, did, I would just tell them to, to, to throw to, to first base and we worked on it in BP. Three two to Rivera and he yanks one foul. Did you turn your back to run no, the bag or no. did you keep your eye on your fielder? Um, All I had to do, my father taught me when we were very young kids, and we started teaching us the footwork. He says, I'm going to make this bag. It's going to be a part of your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be that familiar to you. And Rivera strikes out for the second time. So, so you always felt like it was tethered to you at all times. Yeah, so I could run. I mean, when the ball's first hit, if we can get an overview of the, of the infield, when you first make your break to first base, you know which direction you're going to run. I mean, if you're out here, you're going to run in this direction, and you don't need to you don't need to pick up the bag till you're around 10 feet from it. Then I can just real quick glance. So I could do it with one hand tied behind my back. You do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, you talk about a sense of where you are. If you're 30 feet away from the bag and you need to get there, if you closed your eyes, could you do it? I'd be close, very close. I might trip over the bag. Well, there is that. It's like sonar. But Ray Knight, interesting story in the World Series. When Ray made that error in Game, was it six? Ronnie, you six. might. Six. Game six. He's ball. I was late coming to the bag, and Ray had a routine ground ball, and his, his ball sailed. And he came in the dugout after the inning was over. He fell behind. And I was just, Ray said, you were the, all year long. You're getting to that bag late, and now it's going to cost us. And I go, I'm sitting there. Ray was livid. I mean, he told me later, he goes, I was going to be the GOAT. He was a fine. I just said, Ray, we're going to get it back. And he goes, well, okay. And we did. <laughs> Bruce Strauss went out to left, and Nunez has room, retreating to get it. Two out. Well, I mean, if it hadn't been for that error, then maybe Ray isn't cemented in history scoring the run. Exactly. exactly. All the court. Yes, you're right. Very good point. I always felt that Davy, when he was on second base, should have pinch ran for him because Ray, we had to bunt. Was first and second, nobody out. And Davey had Hojo up there, and we swung with them. Remember? Yeah. Right. He didn't bunt. Right. And I, you know, I never. I'm sitting on the bench, going, I don't understand this. That was ninth, ninth inning, right? Right. And we could win the ball game. And I thought for sure he was going to pinch hit, pinch run for Ray, and get someone speedy on there. We got to run. We win. We go home. But it set up the whole course of events for one of the most memorable. Games in World Series history. Wilmer lines one toward the left field line and it gets by Nunez and goes to the wall. Well, Nunez showing his inexperience as an outfielder there. Looks that ball skipped by him and Wilmer has a two out double. No, well, he's a third baseman by trade here and this is uh, Ill, Ill advised. Now the Giants have made 11 errors this season as a team, but in their last seven games, They've made eight errors. That's a lot. He misread that because it wasn't hit as hard as he thought. Kind of off the end of the bat by Wilmer, so it dropped quickly. Wilmer's first double of the year. So the Mets have the tying run at second with two down. Neil Walker drove in the first Met run with a long double to right center. Would have had two RBIs, but the ball hopped over the wall, and Jay Bruce had to stop at third. Neil takes a cutter for a strike. You're lucky Ray didn't punch you. Well, <laughs> Ray and I went way back. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ray uh, played a ball against Ray in the Florida State League. He's with the he's with uh, Tampa or oh, the uh, Tampa Reds. But before that, he was a Gold Glove boxer. Right, I know. Which Eric Davis found. We knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so so, okay. Who would win in a fight, Ray or Kevin Mitchell? Oh, that would be a brouhaha. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Man, have to be a brouhaha. Well, I wouldn't want to let Kevin get inside. 
<laughs> get close. <laughs> I'd have to jab him. <laughs> Keep him away. Don King might want to throw that fight. Really? Bob Arum. And more ahead 0 and 2. And Walker hits one toward the middle of the diamond. It comes up nicely for Arroyo. And he throws out Walker to end the inning. So Flores stranded after a two out double. Moore and the Giants still up 2 1 after three. Play the Angels at 7:15 p.m. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a David Wright starting lineup figurine, courtesy of Wise Snacks. For tickets, visit Mets.com/tickets. Jacob Degrom has struck out his last four batters. He takes on Buster Posey to start the fourth. Ronnie, if you're upstairs with a fastball like this and you see Degrom, particularly against the left-handers, where he's up and away. Yeah. I'm sure you've had a start like that. What do you do to correct? I, I shorten my stride a little bit so you get your arm out in front of you so the ball is released lower. Like I, that? I, my issue was always if I was up in the strike zone for the most part, I was overthrowing. So I, I try to, you know, ramp it back a little bit to about 85, 90%, and the ball would sink. Hits sharply over the bag and Posey's got himself a base hit. He'll take the turn, try for two. Bruce's throw coming in, and it's cut off. Posey's got himself a leadoff double. Well, that's vintage Buster Posey. He goes the other way naturally. Gets the ball to all fields. That's a flat slider that goes right with it, right down the line. It's just fantastic hitting. Almost gave you a clue to what he's trying to do tonight in his first at bat. Ground ball to the first baseman, and now this one a double. I don't know why Neil Walker cut that ball. Bruce made a nice play getting to it in the corner, made an accurate throw. Probably wasn't going to get him anyway. Christian Arroyo takes outside. Arroyo making his 11th start since being called up. Play more shortstop than third base in the minors, but they project him more as a third baseman in the majors. That was back to fastball one and one. Of course, Posey was the 2012 National League batting champion. It's very difficult for a catcher to win a batting championship behind behind the plate, all the wear and tear.
So that troubling number on the Grom, 360 with runners in scoring position, that is very much against what we have come to know of DeGrom over the course of his career. Shocking. Um, the, the one thing about the game is that the, every pitcher gets people on base. But the good pitchers that number's always low. So it's you know it's a s small sample here early in the season but that's got to get better. Half a dozen starts. And he just misses outside with the fastball two and two to Arroyo. Well, the real struggle for the young Arroyo, he's beaten up on lefties, but four for 25 against right handed pitching. Rom struck him out his first time up tonight. Well, tomorrow night, game two of this series, Zach Wheeler for the Mets, Jeff Samarja for the Giants. Our coverage begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow. On SNY. 0 and 4 start for Samarja. Now Kane, who was pitching really well until his last start, goes Wednesday afternoon against either Tommy Malone in his Mets debut or Rafael Montero. I would bet on Malone. Okay. He's here. I think he. Um he throw a bullpen today or I think that was the yeah. key if he was here in time to throw a bullpen they were certainly heavily considering starting Malone. Be full circle for Tommy who made his big league debut against the Mets and now pitching for them backhanded by Rivera three and two. Posey at second and nobody out. Three and two to Arroyo. And he struck him out with the changeup. Mm. Seven strikeouts for Jacob DeGrom. Boy, what a pitch. Now the guts to throw that pitch. Changeup. He's used it a lot more tonight. And way out in front is Arroyo. There's the grip. He doesn't really put that in the very back of his hands, more on his fingertips. That's why he can throw it 87 miles an hour. So one away now Eduardo Nunez who flied out to left field his first time up. I mentioned Nunez filling in in the outfield and we saw him struggle to make a play toward the line. It's only the 15th game in his career he started in the outfield compared to several hundred at various infield positions. That's one of the things that uh, you know baseball people will tell you is that the game is trending towards players that are more utility oriented that they can play a lot of positions just because you put a guy in a position doesn't mean he can play the position well if I always remember in a situation like that that's where in St. Louis many years ago that's rolled to the right side and Walker gets in front of it. Nunez retired two out. Posey goes over to third. And the Mets called up a, a guy who at that, at that time was completely unknown, a young player named Marco Scudero. Mm -hmm. And it was a late game situation. And Bobby Valentine moved Scudero to left field. And he messed up a play. And the Mets lost the game. And the writers asked Bobby after the game, well, why did you play Scudero in left field? He said, well, they told me he could play the outfield. <laughs> Bobby V. Of course, Marco went on to have a tremendous career and was a postseason hero for these Giants. Half swing by Gillespie, and he went around, nothing and one. Well, there's Tommy Malone. The newest Met sitting next to Robert Gazelman. Always an awkward situation. You sit, you hope someone knows you well enough that you can have a conversation for a few innings. Well, 
when he takes his jacket off or his hoodie he'll be wearing number twenty nine in case you'd like to okay. identify him by his number. I'm told that our our graphics guy in the truck Eddie Warman played high school baseball with Tommy Malone. So with there's somebody for Tommy to talk to. Sounds sounds like an 0 for 4 to me. <laughs> Eddie can confirm that later. I'm sure the uh, the high school roster is on the internet. <laughs> we we can confirm. <laughs> Posey at third with two out, two and one to Gillespie, who fly to center his first time up. And he fouls back the fastball, two and two. Orkis Hernandez would be next. You know, three or four starts ago. Jacob had that start with 24 swing and misses. That uh, has been a lot tougher since that start in that category. Two two. Mm. Just missed. I'll tell you what, it's a pitcher up there, ring him up. No offense, Ronnie. <laughs> well, the offense I would have is that Gillespie probably has the uh, offense at you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> called him a pitcher. Wow. Sorry. Wow. Uh, no, no, I no, and I did not mean it. <laughs> I was mistaken. <laughs> Three, two coming, with Posey at third and two out, and Gillespie fouls it away. Let's go. Back to that changeup that got Arroyo, the G pitch cast. Well, this was a swing and miss. 3 2 pitch to be able to put that changeup, not only change speeds with it, but that ball was right on the outside corner. Might see it again here to Gillespie. Backdoor slider instead. Again the three two and he missed with it ball four. Third walk given up by DeGrom. Seventy three pitches Ron that a lot a lot. Yep. A lot. Yep. Fifteen per inning or less is your goal but it's far beyond that. I always like to ask the obvious questions. No no no. It's you know it, it's if he has a difficult time with Hernandez we're talking about around the 80 pitch mark so that's that's 20 an inning that doesn't fly in today's game. What's interesting about the pitch count and we always have it up there in the bug up there in the upper left hand corner is when when we played we never kept track of pitch counts it wasn't of much importance. Um, if you got off to a shaky start and had 70 pitches you might finish the game. Well I know Mel Stoudemire used to always have a clicker that he kept kind of a count of it. But really, it was your eyes. So if you were watching Jacob DeGrom tonight, you'd say to yourself, you know what? He's not sharp. He's right. not on top of his game. Correct. So here's Hernandez, first and third and two out. And he takes the fastball high. Which isn't to say that all of a sudden he may find the range. Oh, absolutely. You know? He's one of the best. DeGrom, when he hasn't got his good stuff to rectify it in the course of a game, we've seen him do it countless times. He walked Hernandez his first time. And behind him, 2 and 0, a couple of high fastballs. Three walks and three and two thirds again yeah. tonight for DeGrom. It's been an odd feature of his season so far. You know how we've uh, talked a lot this season about Zach Wheeler who's been trying to slow his body down and let his arm catch up. Well that's exactly what Jacob Grom has been doing the last few starts his body is so quick to the plate that his arm is just a tick late. It's very hard to see but it's just a little late and when it's late balls always elevated. By Hernandez, and it's two and two. Mm -hmm. 
Now this is probably the biggest decision they have to make all night. You don't want to go 3 2. You got to retire Hernandez here. Do you go with the same pitch. Now remember two strikes a hitter should be a little better at that pitch. Than before two strikes should cut down. In the air to right Bruce heading toward the corner. And in foul ground can't quite make the play against the sidewall. Good effort by Jay, but that wall gets to you in a hurry once you cross that line. And you just didn't quite get there. You know what? Also, you see, well, where's the lights out there? It gets really dark in those corners. Lay a shadow in that corner. I think more so than in the left field mm. corner. Two and two to Hernandez. DeGrom tonight has struck out seven and make it eight as he fans Hernandez to end the inning. So DeGrom gets around the leadoff double by Posey to keep it a two to one game going to the bottom of the fourth. His titles in his first 10 seasons as Giants manager had a little uh, heart issue earlier this yeah. year had to miss some time but back at it. Stengel and McCarthy only managers with more with seven and 18 1800 victories now for Boach. I would say that would provide a ticket to Cooperstown. Pretty good for a Sunday catcher. Reyes rips one into the glove of Gillespie for the first time. Bruce Bochy was one of my favorite teammates that I've ever had. No one enjoyed the game more, uh, made every teammate feel great, and I think that's what he brought to his job great communication skills. Always played the day game in San Diego, backup catcher, right. had the big old helmet. Houston uh, and yep. then and then a little bit with the Mets had the sleepy eyes you're going to say hi to him get to the plate and he was, like he was half asleep. <laughs> Eliza sharp man. Rivera pops one up. Easy for belt. Two out so three pitches two outs for more is his pitch count starting to stabilize after a 36 pitch marathon back at the first. 
That's a, that's a great word, Gary, because that's really what you have to do in today's game as a starting pitcher. At some point, if you have a tough start, you got to stabilize that pitch count. There's Lagares, who was hit in the ribs by a pitch his first time. He fights one off. I wonder sometimes. I mean, pitchers obviously are very conscious of their pitch count. Yeah. Because it, you know, dictates how long they last in the game. So. As a pitcher, do you change anything to try and if your pitch count is rising, do you do you challenge hitters more? Do you do you think about that, trying to get deeper into a game? I mean, you, you always are trying to have a low pitch count. I think what happens is that some of it is happenstance. Guys get a little more aggressive. I think one of it, uh, one thing is that you're in the bottom of the lineup. So sometimes you're more aggressive as a pitcher in the bottom of the lineup as you are at the top in the middle of the lineup. So, you know, sometimes you stabilize your pitch count in the bottom of the order. And he strikes out Lagares on three pitches. So a six pitch inning for Matt Moore as he sets the Mets down one, two, three for the first time tonight after four two to one Giants. Ford dealers, the Buy Ford Now sales event is on. For huge savings, go to buyfordnow.com. Is that the shot from the SNY headquarters? It's darker than it was before, Keith. Yes, look at the Brooklyn Bridge in the foreground. <laughs> Very nice. Headquarters, that's hilarious. Manhattan Bridge in the background. Williamsburg, not pictured. I imagine Kurt's there all hunkered down. <laughs> you think he sleeps there? <laughs> Matt Moore leads off in the fifth inning. And hits a check swing past the mound. Reyes charges and throws out the jogging Moore for the first out. Well, that's what Tom <laughs> needs more of. Quick outs. Yes. Well, he's laughing because he didn't know how to get off the mound. He follows through to the first base side. So he didn't know whether to get over there, try to backhand it, and he just looked kind of awkward well, the whole time. He tried behind the back. The ball was hit so slowly. <laughs> Like he double jabbed for it. <laughs> so one out. Here's Joe Panic, who's been up twice and struck out both times. And he drives one down the right field line. Foul. Joe Panic, first round pick by the Giants out of St. John's in 2011. Did not get to face the St. John's product, Amir Garrett, when the Giants were in Cincinnati because Garrett had been sent down to make room for a relief pitcher. Garrett, of course, the former basketball player at St. John's. 
He had some good games. I wonder why they sent him down. I think they just had a need for a reliever. Okay. I think he'll be back. Ah, with all the girls there. It's like a party. It <laughs> is. Two and two to panic with Brandon Belt on deck. Rounded toward the hole and Panic's got a base hit. Just the third hit of the night for the Giants off Jacob DeGrom. Well, that was a good changeup um, by DeGrom, but because Panic hits the ball all over the field, there's no shift on him, and that becomes a base hit. You think about left hand hitters hitting the ball at that speed to that spot. In 2017 baseball, that's an out 90% of the time. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, if Brandon Belt hits it to the same spot, Wilmer Flores will be right there to play. Belt has walked and scored and struck out 0 for 1. And, you know, the Giants are a struggling team right now. What would be wrong with him bunting for a hit? Belt and Rizzo are the two best at bunting. Against the shift. I mean, with Pence and Posey behind him, why not? And there he is. Hey. Mm. Mm. Or Pence with his atrocious looking swing on deck. <laughs> it is a, uh, I don't know what he's doing. Whatever it is, it works for. Oh, him. it sure does. And Dull trying to push that bunt, but fouled it off. He doesn't have to be too fine either. It's really a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> See, what I don't understand is if you're the Mets, why are you giving it to him? Well, I mean, it's not like Dull is a guy who hits 40 home runs a year. It's not like Stanton's up, right. you know? And, and I think Keith is, is right. You don't have to be too fine. The only issue we have, Keith, to Grom is really quick. You just bun it hard. You got to bun it hard. Yeah. One and two to Belt. Boy, he's just been a broken record. He's been way up and away against the left hand hitters with that fastball. It's getting away from him. Well, his last start, he threw 109 pitches in five innings. There he is at 88 in the fifth. Another high pitch count game. And Bill takes it just a little high and away. Two and two. That's a fastball in and up. He's had a hard time getting the ball in. He does there and strikes out Belt, and that's number nine for Jacob. Second time he's gotten Belt. Struck out Joe Panic to start the game on the same pitch. Struck him out twice. Four Seamer. Hits four. It's the two strikeouts on pitches above the belt. Two belt. So two out now Pence who delivered the two run homer in the first inning hit it to right center field his third of the year. Mm. And DeGrom with nine strikeouts today now is 58 for the year most in the National League. <coughs> Passed by Scherzer and Kershaw tonight. Under Pence entered tonight with just one extra base hit in his last 86 at bats, and then homered his first time up tonight. But really, this entire giant team has struggled to score runs. Last in the league in runs scored. One and two now to Pence. And this was the first inning. Fastball, belt high, wanted it in right down the middle. Little above the belt. 
And again, we're just seeing the ball carrying early in the season when it usually does not. <laughs> Pants above the knee, like a wide receiver in football. Can't say I like the look. <laughs> it's unique, and he's unique. Well, he wants to show the umpire where his knees are in that strike zone, I guess. Well, that's why they, they have all, all the special signs for Hunter Pence. Because he does inspire creativity, being of a creative bent himself. One two coming. Lifted foul. Buster Posey would be next. Well, DeGrom about to throw his 95th pitch. Mm. And so here he is again. In a game where he's just not going to be able to get as deep as he would like. One two coming. And the curveball outside. Two and two. Almost all the pitches except that last one have been hard and away. If he's down, that's good. Up and away is. Pence's strength. 2 2. Struck him out. Got him with the changeup. Number 10 for DeGrom. Four times in his last five starts, he struck out 10 or more. Halfway through, it's 2 to 1 Giants. Limiting the Mets postseason to just a single game. You know, I've never watched that game in its entirety because I was traveling uh, the day before, um, or the day after, whatever wild card. Uh, you know, I did Baltimore and Toronto. Right. And uh, and I have it at home. I have it on my computer too, and I just have not watched it. Well, here's the capsule. <laughs> Noah pitched great. Yeah. Baumgartner pitched better. Longer. Granderson made a great catch. Okay. Familia wasn't great. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's all I got for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, well if uh, Syndergaard had stayed in the game, which was not his call, there might have been a different story. He might still be playing. That's right. Baumgartner could have gone about 12, by the way. <laughs> DeGrom leads off in the home fifth. We haven't talked about Madison Baumgartner yet tonight, and yeah. the Giants. Obviously missing Bumgarner, much the way the Mets are missing Syndergaard. And in Bumgarner's case, it was a dirt bike accident on an off day that uh, is going to take away at least half of his season. Yeah, what happened to the golf on the off day? You know, <laughs> but oh. uh, boy, it's like what happened to, to Ron Gant with the Braves. That's right. Motorcycle accident, or it was off-road vehicle, yeah. bike, wasn't it? Yeah. Dirt bike. Same thing. Rom slaps one over the bag. That's a base hit. So DeGrom down by a run, gets himself a leadoff hit, and he's aboard. 
to start the bottom of the fifth. 0 2 hit, too, on a cutter away, Keith. Why would a left hand pitcher out there and a left hand hitting pitcher, would you not have the infield shifted to the opposite field? I don't get it. <laughs> I mean that is nonsense. I mean Degrom's not going to pull the ball with the guy throwing hard. He's going to go up the middle. Fourth hit of the year for Degrom. And now Michael Conforto steps in with the tying run at first. Conforto has walked and struck out tonight. Giants play the infield straight up against Conforto with the lefty on the mound and the double play in order. And he takes the curveball down. Fifth inning recap. Under Pence, a two run homer in the first. Matt Morris survived a shaky first inning and has held the lead. DeGrom, for the fourth time in the last five starts, has struck out 10. But he's down by a run and now running the bases. Another curveball misses 2 0. Oh. Keith, when you see a third baseman playing off the line, a little bit to pull with the pitcher 0 2. I think right now I just figured out well, you and I have about a three year window and over and under before this game is unrecognizable. <laughs> High strike to Conforto two and one. Well it was almost uh, ninety nine percent of the pitchers would always shade to the opposite right. field. They don't hit every day. They're going to be behind. You always play them to the opposite field. And the pitcher throws them something off speed. A good and it's a good hitting pitcher, and it's his fault. Yep. Three and one to Conforto. So Conforto struck out on a th on a cutter his last time up. So you would think three and one that would be the pitch of choice from Moore here. Let's see if he throws it. There's the call. Fastball in, beat him. It was a fastball, right, Ron? Yeah, well, he, he called cutter, but he, he threw a cutter that didn't cut. So nobody out. DeGrom, the runner at first, 3 2 count. Fordo struck out his last time up. Posey wants that cutter again. Not running. And De Conforto drives one to right center. That's down for a base hit. DeGrom takes a turn. He'll hold it second. So Conforto has his first hit of the night. His third hit against the lefty this season. And the Mets have the table set in the fifth. Well, good hitting by Conforto. Did not get worried inside. He beat him twice in. Now he makes the mistake. No, it, not out enough. A little lousy cutter. But if you pull off, you're dead. And he did not pull off. DeGrom had a tiny bit of a hesitation, or he might have thought of going first to third. So now two on and nobody out. TJ Rivera, the batter, he's had a rough time against Moore so far tonight. Struck out both times. Both times on three two pitches. Rom at second, Conforto at first. Better than average speed in both spots. And it's pulled foul. Well, I said in the beginning that Rivera, when the men are on base, that's when he attacks. It's very aggressive with runners in scoring position. It's almost like he tries to lull you to sleep when there's no one on by taking that first pitch. But with runners on, you're right, Keith. Tying and go ahead runs on base with nobody out of the fifth. And TJ launches one to left field. Toward the corner goes Nunez, and it's one hop to the wall. DeGrom will score. Conforto will stop at third. TJ Rivera ties the game with an RBI double, and it's two to two. Down and in where he likes it. A lot like Flores. 
That's his spot right there, middle and down. He's fast inside, very quick, and short hops the wall. And let's the Grom's going to score easy here. Make sure it's going to drop. Look at that, an old pro. Now the back run, Mr. Conforto. We'll take a look and see. He should be on second base. He's breaking right away. I just don't see a lot in today's game guys scoring on oh, that ball was hit hard off the down the line. But what's lacking in the game today because of the size of the ballparks and the, the cut of the grass so like a putting green. Is nothing more exciting than a double and a guy scoring from first than a close play at the plate. Don't see it very often anymore. Three straight hits to start the inning a run in and now Bruce pops it up. Gillespie near the bag. And into foul ground to get it one out. OJ want to want that one back. It's a hanger right down the Piperoni. He just missed it. Oh, right there to hit. And you can have the expression says it all. Well, they have the infield back against Bruce. Going to bring him in halfway against Flores with second and third and one out. Wilmer had a double to left field his last time up, one for two on the night. Chance to give the Mets the lead here in the bottom of the fifth. And four to a third, TJ Rivera at second. And he ignores outside, ball one. Giants get their bullpen cranking with Moore finding trouble here in the fifth inning. Rom back in the dugout after scoring the tying run, a chance to catch his breath. And Flores fouls it off, got jammed one and one. Showed that number earlier. He has not hurt it at all with a double and two trips. That's a thousand for the night. Slugging percentage. George Contos first man up in the Giants bullpen. One one to Wilmer. Balls it foul. One and two. The cutter ran in on him. Keep trying to throw that pitch in, and it's a good pitch. When it's that kind of pitch, because there's nowhere to hit it but foul. But if you miss out over the plate at all, it's right into the strength of Flores. It was to Rivera. Well, Moore got one out without the base runners moving. With Bruce popping up, he could use a strikeout or a pop up here. And Wilmer stays alive on a check swing foul. Posey calling that fastball up in the strike zone. More hit his mark. Kind of a lucky foul ball almost for Flores, right? One two coming and he got a piece of another one. Buster Posey won his first gold glove last year. Well he does a lot of things he lets the pitcher know exactly where he wants to pitch and it almost uh, gives you extra confidence when you're a pitcher when your catcher is just like communicating to you exactly where he wants it. But Mr. Buster's got to be great in charades. I mean he's just really <laughs> lets his pitcher know I like that little. Disjointed arrow. That's right. We have it right here. Very nice. <laughs> Wilmer's fouled off a couple in a row, and he takes that one low. Two and two. Neil Walker waiting on deck. Conforto at third. Rivera, who drove in the tying run at second. Moore has struck out four tonight. This will be his seventh pitch to Wilmer Flores. 
And Wilmer pops it up. Mm. Arroyo makes the grab. So after the Mets had tied it, had second and third and nobody out, their three and four hitters, Bruce and Flores, have each popped up. And it's left to Neil Walker. Walker's had some good at bats. Of course, the double that scored a run in the first inning. Sharp ground ball to shortstop in the second. And I mean the second at bat. Boy, it'd be a shame to leave these runners on. Second and third, nobody out. Walker began the night with a 207 batting average and a 391 average with runners in scoring position. He's already had one hit with a runner in scoring position tonight. And he takes a strike from Moore. And you know, to me, he looks better from the right hand side of the plate than he does from the left hand side early in the season. And the Mets have turned that number around from last year when they were historically low. They're 100 points higher now than they finished last season with runners in scoring position. They could use one right now from Neil Walker with two out and two in scoring position. Over 90 pitches for the night, as was DeGrom in his five. Slowing down the pace in a tight spot. And Walker shoots one foul and it's 0 2. Admore's average just a shade over five innings per start this year, but this is a guy who threw 198 innings last year. We've seen both pitchers now go through five innings for the ground, almost five for more, with barely a breaking ball for either one of them. One and two to Walker. And Neil pops one foul. That'll come back out of play. Again the one two and Posey goes down to block it and it keeps Conforto at third now it's two and two to Walker Posey's from the school he just kind of hurls his body where he thinks that ball is going to go and just tries to make himself as big as he can a big target to block that ball in the dirt. Two two up and in as he ran that cutter inside now it's a full count to Walker Jose Reyes would be next. So Walker has worked his way from 0 and 2 back to 3 and 2. I mean he's set up for a fastball away if he can dot that outside corner but Moore hasn't been able to do that all night long. Conforto at third T.J. Rivera at second with two out. That's have tied it here in the fifth looking for a two out hit from Walker. You know we saw the numbers before on Moore that you flashed up there 46 wins and 112 game starts his best year was 2013 when he finished ninth in the Cy Young Award voting. Went 17 and 4 that year in 27 starts. And then the next year had the Tommy John surgery, and he's been fighting uphill ever since. 13 and 12 last year combined between Tampa Bay and the Giants. It's better for Tampa Bay than he did for the Giants, though. Mm -hmm. 
Seventh pitch of the at bat coming to Walker. And Neal goes down swinging on the curveball to end the inning. That's a three straight hits to start the inning, but Morris sets down the three, four, and five. Tied at two after five. Ronnie is very partial to Trey Mancini. He was raving about him before. Buster Posey gets a hold of one and hits it deep to left and forget that. A long home run off the bat of Posey into the second deck. First pitch of the sixth inning and Posey loses it. His third home run of the year puts the Giants right back in front three to two. Well Ronnie had noted earlier that. Posey had 31 hits and 26 of them were singles. Well, he's got a double and a home run tonight. Right. Looked exactly like the swing in 2014 against the Cincinnati Reds in the playoffs where he hit a grand slam off Latos in the first inning. Game over. First pitch, fastball. Wanted it away. I wonder if Posey. Oh, it had too much plate, too. Up again, Ronnie. Up. You see DeGrom's reaction. He knew almost. As soon as the ball left his fingers. The distance was Stanton esque. <laughs> Watch his reaction. What's interesting about this start, which I think makes it different than any of the other starts that DeGrom has had this year, as I've not seen him have lose have no command over his fastball. He's been up all game and he's thrown great portion of them down down the middle he's put the plate Ron you never see him yeah. off the corners Royal takes outside well the Giants have not been a home run hitting team this year but Pence and Posey have now gone deep Royal strikes out that's number 11 for DeGrom as he got him for the third time tonight. So we talked about down and away used to be his strength. He's not been able to hit that today. Most of the balls have been up in the strike zone. Right down the pipe, belt high. Belt high, those balls go a long way, always have. To hitters like Posey. 
painful enough but even more so after the Mets had second and third and nobody out and couldn't score in the last half inning and then Posey loses one on the first pitch. Nunez pops it up and Rivera surrounds it for the second out. Well you know you you are you have pitchers that you know the hundred to one hundred and ten mark is is a very rare place for them to go and because of you know DeGrom's high pitch count you're trying to push him get him through this sixth inning. Well he threw uh, a lot of pitches in that fifth inning. He's only thrown a handful here in the sixth. But only one so far has mattered. Now one more out to get to get through the sixth against Connor Gillespie who fouls it off the curveball. You know we, we started today talking about the 18 inning game with all the strikeouts 48 strikeouts. And you know there was a day if you struck out 11 or 12 that was your A game. I yes. mean you were throwing a shutout or yep. gave up one run. Now you know he's going to be on the losing end when this inning's over. So Robles and Edgen up in the bullpen. Slap down to third. Flores picks it on the backhand and throws out Gillespie to end the inning. But Buster Posey puts the Giants right back in front with his third home run of the year. The Giants' second home run off to Grom tonight, 3 2 San Francisco. Neil Walker an RBI double in the first TJ Rivera an RBI double in the fifth but the Mets left uh, ducks on the pond in the mm. fifth inning and mm. the Giants now back in front on Buster Posey's home run and folks I've been informed by my producer in between innings I'm sorry if I've been sniveling and coughing a little bit I have a sore throat and I've so intent on bringing you the best possible analysis that I forget to press the cough button and you've probably been hearing me in your front room and probably been very annoyed. I apologize. I just like to know how does the sniffling differ from the muttering under your breath that we normally <laughs> get from you. I don't feel very good to be honest with you. <laughs> where, where are you from Dublin Ireland in the front room people are in the front front row okay, your living room your whatever your den. <laughs> the sitting room. On the set team. <laughs> Pence coming into shallow right and catches Reyes's fly ball to start at the bottom of the sixth. One out. Now Rene Rivera is 0 for 2. Well, Robles and Edgen were up in the bullpen in the last inning. And it looks like somebody's going to get up again, so it looks like DeGrom is going to be done. After 105 pitches in six innings. As for Moore, he's about to throw his 100th pitch, and the Giants have the bullpen ready behind him. There's 
heavy lifting for Matt Moore in that fifth inning. Gave up three straight hits. Mets tied the game, had second and third, and nobody out. But two pop ups and a strikeout later, Moore was back in the dugout. And now he has the lead again. Rivera flies one foul. One on one. <laughs> Pick up. <laughs> Dual cab. Fernando Salas. Getting ready. And the curveball bends into Rivera, one and two. Juan Lagares, the number eight hitter on deck. Mets had nine straight games where they scored five or more. That streak was stopped yesterday. And now the run's a little tougher to come by. Moore has thrown as many as 105 pitches in a start this year. But he threw just 69 in his last start because he got knocked out in the fourth inning. So maybe pushed a little further tonight. Two and two. Matt Reynolds with a bat in his hand. Pitcher spot due up fourth in the inning. And Rivera pulls a foul. Got here very early today. I overnighted in the city, and Matt Reynolds was out early before anybody else was on the field getting ground balls at third base at shortstop. Got to work extra hard when you're not playing every day. You're right. Got to stay ready. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming to Rene Rivera. And a full count. I think also, if you are a player like Matt Reynolds, you can see on the horizon that it's very important to be a versatile player. Uh, the more positions you can play, the better chance you have to stick with a major league roster. Look no further than Wilmer Flores. Rivera bangs one off his leg, a foul ball. Well, we mentioned earlier that as Dribble Cabrera is supposedly available today, which is shocking after watching him get hurt over the weekend. But Terry Collins said as Dribble not only is not going on the DL, but could pinch hit if necessary tonight. That's flew Gavin Cicchini across the country just in case, but. Not activated. That's drilled into left field, and Rene Rivera has a base hit. Cut off by Nunez, and Rivera stops at first with a one out single. And we'll see if that's the end of the line for more. And here comes Bruce Bochy, and it will be. Fastball in and was off the plate, too, it almost looked like. So Moore is done after five and a third, having thrown 108 pitches. And Bruce Bochy will bring in a right hander to face Juan Lagares. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Mets trying to tie it in the sixth, down three to two.
fastball has been clocked at more than 100 miles an hour as it comes into the batter. But nobody ever clocked one going out. You hear it as sportscaster Russ Hodges describes it. There's a swing and a long drive to deep left center field, and you can tell it. Bye bye, baby. No one ever clocked one going out. Now they have. That was Russ Hodges. I don't think it was his voice, uh, but that was old Candlestick Park right there. Of course, Contos on to pitch for the Giants in the sixth. Yeah, nine runs and 13 innings given up by Contos. Look at that left-handed hitting 333. I was a little surprised that Curtis Granderson maybe didn't pick up a bat and hit for Lagaris. Maybe the consequence of a short bench. Mm. Owen to Lagaris. Anyway, what do you think uh, Willie Mays' exit velocity was like? Well, I don't know what his exit velocity, but you can say how big his hands are. Look at the uh, that top hand pinky. Well, that's very uh, almost overlapped. And hey, it worked for him. <laughs> the greatest player I've ever seen. Owen to Lagaris, who's 0 for 1, also been hit by a pitch tonight. And Contos misses away with a cutter, 1 and 2. Gary said the same thing yesterday or two days ago when Ooh. it was Willie's birthday best player you had yep. ever seen. Oh there's no no I closest guy to come to Willie was in his Dave Parker and that one window he had for around three years when the batting title two years in a row the closest thing I've seen to Willie. So Ronnie if you're too young to have seen Willie Mays who's the best player you've ever seen. Boy that's that's. Um, I mean, you saw Carl Yastrzemski when uh, you were a kid. I did. Um, boy, that's a, that's a that's a hard question. Frank, Frank Robinson. Hard question. I didn't see him play enough either. You know, you know the games those days. It was one yeah. on, one on Saturdays. Right. And my family didn't go to baseball games when I was a kid. I was fortunate enough to be grown up in San Francisco in Willie's prime. Garris lays off. Meanwhile, Curtis Granderson is now out on deck to bat for Degrom. When we didn't go to very many games, we'd always go to the day games, and there was a lot more day games back in those days. Well, we were fortunate enough here in the 60s to see Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, mm -hmm. Roberto Clemente. Wow. I mean, you know, three of the greatest players who ever played. Well, you got to put Frank Robinson in that too before he got traded. He was, yeah, he was in the American League, so. Not till 65. Well, right? by the time I started going to games. Okay. But what, what was remarkable back in those days when you went to Shea Stadium and a guy like you know Mays or or uh, Clemente came to the plate got a big hand <laughs> every time. Yep. Different day now. Lagaris fouls it away. What was also great and it's not in today's game for, uh, for various reasons was that Sundays were double headers so right. you can go to two for the price of one. So you go watch the Giants on a Sunday double header. You know you're going to see Mays McCovey. Uh, Jim Ray Hart. I mean, some sluggers. Bobby Bonds. And before that, it was Felipe Lou was in right field. Cepeda. Gosh, what a lineup. Yeah, and you go to a Sunday doubleheader at 1 o'clock, you'd be done by 5 30. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd see Willie Mays do something to help win a ball game. Seventh pitch to Ligaris. And he fouls off another fastball. So Ligaris giving Contos a battle. Antos in his sixth year as a Giant. Mm. Started out in the Yankees organization, came out of Northwestern. Well, they've had a lot of relief pitchers that have had long stretches of excellence for this team. I'm thinking of uh, one that's in the booth right. next to us, Jeremy Affelt and Javi Lopez. Sergio Romo, who's right. now a Dodger. Rivera at first and one out. 2 2 to Ligaris. And he bounces one foul. So Ligaris getting his money's worth here. And the Giants last year had all sorts of problems in their bullpen. 30 blown saves. Terrible second half last year. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat from Contos to Lagares. And Juan fouls another one.
You know, we were talking about the greatest player we ever saw. There's a guy playing now who's got Willie Mays type skills. And we'll see him here in a couple of weeks. Right. Mike Trout. He can do everything the same way that Mays could. And he's, and he's a bigger, bigger, man. bigger man yeah. too. Of course, everybody's bigger now. <laughs> we have seen some lengthy at bats tonight. Seven, eight, nine. This is going to be a ten pitch at bat at least for Ligaris. And one grounds one slowly. Arroyo goes to second, gets the force on Rivera. No chance to turn two on a ball that slowly hit. But with Rene Rivera running, easily get the force play for the second out. So Lagaris at first with two out. Now Curtis Granderson will pinch hit. My bad about Grandy hitting for Lagaris. Forgot about the pitcher spot. So here he is. Well, if you had a full bench, you could yeah. probably bat for both. Exactly. Yeah. But really, unless Cabrera is available, which it, he may not really be, you've got a three-man bench. I am not a, promo, pro, a proponent of the four-man bench. I am not a proponent of the five-man bench. For Anderson, 0 for 4 yesterday. Hitting 133 for the year, and he drives one to left center field, deep in the gap, back toward the wall. It short hops the wall. Lagaris around third. He's being waved home. Lagaris scores the tying run on a pinch hit double by Curtis Granderson, and it's three to three. Well, left-handers are just wearing Contos out. Another example of it right there. Well, after a 10 pitch at bat by Lagaris, Granderson wastes no time, jumps on the first pitch, and drives it the other way. Outside corner, but it's up. And Curtis showing the ability to go into more to left center this year. It's been a struggle for him. He's showing signs of life. And with Lagaris, who cuts the bases, cuts the corners better than anybody. You can't do it any better than, than Juan. Giants are going to make a double switch. Justin Ruggiano, the former Met, comes in to play left field, and they'll bring in the left-hander to face Michael Conforto. Mets have tied it again in the sixth. We'll be right back.
Mets have tied the game for the second time in as many innings. And now look to get the lead with the go ahead run at second and Stephen Okert comes out of the Giants bullpen. Well recalled on April 16th he's gotten off to a slow start. This young man's got some great stuff though. Good hard sinking fastball and breaking ball. They've got two lefties in that Giants bullpen Okert and Osich. <laughs> Josh Osich, Justin Ruggiano in to play left. He'll play. He'll uh, bat ninth. The pitcher will hit sixth as Nunez came out. Or did Nunez move to third? Yes, he did. Yes. Nunez moved to third base. So Gillespie is out, and the pitcher will hit in his spot. Oh, and two to Conforto, who's one for two in a walk tonight. And Michael goes down on the fastball, three pitches, and Oker takes care of Conforto to end the inning. But the Mets get even, two out pinch hit, doubled by Granderson, makes it 3 3 after six. Well, the uh, Polo Grounds up in Upper Manhattan, huh. home of the Giants, later the home of the Mets. A unique ballpark in every respect. 505 feet to straightaway center field. <laughs> Three guys hit home runs there, right? It was Lou Brock, Joe Adcock, and I forget who the third one was. Hank Aaron? I think you're right. How far in center field, Gary? Uh, at one point it was 505. Wow. Of course, it was 257 down the line, so you had a chance. Just had to pull the ball. Right. Fernando Salas on to pitch for the Mets in the seventh inning. Well, we start all over. This is the relievers part of the evening as Salas comes in. Jorge Hernandez has walked and struck out tonight. Jacob DeGrom went six, allowed three runs, four hits, walked three, struck out 11. Four times in the last five starts, Jake has struck out ten or more, but he gave up two home runs tonight to Pence and Posey. That put a crimp in his evening. That's a trail two nothing, tied it. Tip trailed three to two, tied it. And now Salas trying to hold the fort here in the seventh. Justin Ruggiano on deck after coming onto the double switch. He's in the nine hole. One and one to Hernandez. And the sinker at the knees, one and two. Two and two. 
And Osalis trying to get it back in gear after a terrific beginning to his season. He had a better outing last uh, yesterday on a couple of ground ball outs, pitching in a lopsided game. Now pitching in a close game. And Hernandez fouls off the fastball. Did his eye black say SOS? Is that what you have when you're 2 2? In a 2 2 count, you need an SOS, Keith, on the eye black. <laughs> SOS. Save our ship or save. Oh, save our slider. That's a call for help in any respect. <laughs> Maybe it's 505. Maybe it is 505. <laughs> I don't know. As long as it's not 666. 505, is that a, an area code or is that, uh, say, your good batting practice center? Oh, very good. You would never wear that then. No, or SOS for that matter. <laughs> 3 2 from Salas and Hernandez with an ugly cut strikes out for the first out of the inning. People's United Bank brings you tonight's starters. It was a flawed outing for both. DeGrom and Moore both threw a ton of pitches. DeGrom wound up with 11 strikeouts. Moore just one walk and five strikeouts in his five and a third, and it'll be a no decision night for both. Now, Justin Ruggiano up for the first time. Justin spent a little while as a Met last year and had one shining moment that he can no longer have. His shining moment was a grand slam off Madison Baumgartner, who's now his teammate. That's right. Got hurt playing the outfield, never really recovered. But he had his moment. Be interesting. I'm going to ask Fernando tomorrow when I see him. He's changed his arm angle a little uh, today. You know, his arm has dropped down a little bit. And I don't know if that was from overuse, uh, but today he really has gotten his arm up higher, has a little more zip on the fastball. One and one to Ruggiano. And the slider rolled out to short. And Reyes makes the accurate throw. Two out. So Ruggiano is retired, and Salas has set down his first two. And here comes Terry Collins. So just as he did yesterday, he's taking Salas out after getting a couple of hitters out and bringing in a lefty with two out and nobody on. It'll be Jerry Blevins coming in to face Joe Panic. 3 3 in the seventh. We'll be right back.
Thanks Taylor. Jerry Blevins is in to pitch for the Mets. Well the big one is the 17 games now 18 for Blevins. Who only seems like he pitches every night. 18 of 31 that's a pace for 94 the number is coming down a tad I think he was on a pace for 98 the last we checked. Well he was trying to get perpetual Pedro that's what he was thinking. I think he's going after Mike Marshall. <laughs> Fernando Salas phase two retired two for the second straight day that's a good sign. Panic is one for three at a base it is last time up against DeGrom. And Blevins oh. fires one that uh, looked like it caught the knees but. Stu Sherwater, the young home plate umpire, said no. Tall umpire. I always say tall umpires have a harder time seeing the ball down. My theory, not a real theory. Good curveball by Blevins. One and two to panic. Well, that's the big sweeping curve, and Blevins can pull the string on it, and get a lot more break, get you out in front as well. Well, you got panic up. Belt is on deck, so you have to figure if he gets panic, he'll stay in the next inning to face Belt. And the curve ball, and it's nubbed toward third. Tough play for Flores, throwing across his body and off the bag Rivera. And panic has an infield hit. Well, kind of a fortunate hit for Panic, who had cued it right off the end of the bat. Well, fortune follows him here at City Field. His home field, I guess you'd call it. He came into the day hitting 370 in this ballpark, and he's got two hits today. That'll bring a smile on your face, right? I mean, it's not St. John's home field, but they did play the first ever game here. That's right. Played against, was it Georgetown? Right? Georgetown. Before the Mets ever had a chance to play here. So. Blevins will face Belt in this inning. That was part of the plan. <laughs> well, <laughs> if Panic got on, Belt is 0 for 2 in a walk, and the curveball to start him off, ball one. And uh, this will be Blevins' last batter, you can be sure, with Pence and Posey to follow. Looks like Addison Reed in that bullpen. Yeah, there he is. No messing around in a close game. If you got Pence coming up with a couple of men on, it will be Reed here in the seventh. And now Blevins behind 2 0. Oh. So breaking ball changeup gets him behind in the count. This is where a crafty veteran like Blevins does not have to throw a fastball 2 0. Oh. He can still throw that breaking ball for a strike. Well, the, the fastball right by him. The cat and mouse game is yeah. this: is that you got a veteran up there, you're two and zero as a hitter. You can look fastball and just take the curveball, and uh, he's probably the crafty veteran, which he's going to throw it away. Look away. Look, you got a big left field line down there. Conforto way over in the gap. You just got to think. By the way, the crafty veteran also knows that Belt. Has a home run against him in two at bats. <laughs> yeah, he does. I've always said that, you know, my experience against lefties and even right handers, you know, most of them, when they're behind the count, they feel very comfortable or safer on the outside corner. They don't feel they can't. Ronnie said it earlier. They're not yeah. going to get hurt so bad on a pitch away. Levins has gotten it back to two and two. And the curveball strikes out Belt. Side retired. Levin's using that beautiful hook, and Belt has struck out three times tonight. That's 13 strikeouts for Med Pitchers.
Thunderbolts at Coney Island. <laughs> Goes up, it comes down. Cyclone. You know, I used to just love those rides. I can't do them anymore. Yeah, me too. Right? The same. St stomach can't take it. Oh. I used to love roller coasters. Can't do it. The same way. My kids got me on the drop zone in, in California out of Six Flags, and ever since then, I'm done. Home seventh inning in a 3 3 game. TJ Rivera leads off against Stephen Okert, who came in to strike out Conforto to end the sixth. Rivera had a game tying double in the fifth inning. Mets were down two to one. Rivera doubled into the left field corner to tie it. Mets were behind three to two in the sixth, and then Granderson doubled to tie it again. And that's it sharply, but right at the shortstop Arroyo. And that's the first out of the inning. So one out and nobody on that. Jay Bruce. Arroyo at shortstop looks pretty nimble out there, but probably one of the last games he's going to play there. Brandon Crawford has uh, played a rehab game in the minor leagues. I think he's playing another one tonight. Could be activated in the next couple of days. Well, there's every reason to think they'll keep Arroyo around and play third when Crawford comes back. There's a call strike to Bruce. Arroyo did not look good tonight. Three strikeouts. Uh, DeGrom pretty much had his way with him. Bruce is one for three tonight. Had a rough at bat his last time up in the fifth. That's at second and third and nobody out. Got a first pitch cutter in the middle of the plate and popped it up. Lost a run on the Walker ground rule double. Lost a home run in Atlanta. <laughs> Slider by Okert and it's one and two. Hunter Strickland, next man up in the Giants bullpen. One two coming, and Bruce takes it off the plate. Two and two. Wilmer Flores on deck, and you have to believe Strickland will be in to face him. They've read about his slugging percentage against lefties. <laughs> and Bruce is down on strikes, two away. And I don't see Bochi making a move here. A little uh, slider here from Bruce starts in the middle plate, ends up just the, out, the outside corner. SNY's NFL insider Ralph Vacchiano has all the stories from Jets rookie camp plus exclusive video interviews with some of the early standouts on SNY.TV or online home of all things New York sports. So an interesting non call by Boach here. Wonderful. Well it really seeing two different ways of thinking about the same situation from one manager to the other. Terry Collins opted to take Salas out to bring the left hander against panic. And here, with all the numbers pointing in Wilmer's direction, Bochi leaves Okert in. Well, Wilmer's only got two home runs on the year. I know he's missed some time with the infected knee, but Panic only had one home run coming in. Well, and Wilmer has been so proficient against lefties this year as well as last. Yeah. He's got a hit tonight against the left-hander, so he is six for 16 with two home runs. Against Southpaws. This, this 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 part of the ball game right now to keep the ball away. In the air to right field, Pence is right there, and so Bochi called it right, and Okert has a one-two-three bottom of the seventh. On to the eighth we go. Mets and Giants tied at three.
Make sure you get your Met watch. You set that alarm for 7 o'clock for our open. <laughs> and if you're using that Metro card to come to the ballpark, make sure you get here in plenty of time. SNY Super Slow Motion brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Jacob DeGrom went six tonight, struck out 11. Solace and Blevins handled the seventh, and now Addison Reed for the eighth. Uh, Reed has, I, I think, in my estimation, been much more effective of late with both his fastball and slider. Seems to have found, started to find his mark. A couple of strikeouts, an inning of work his last time out against the Marlins. Hunter Pence leads off. Pence delivered the keynote tonight with a two run homer in the first. Pence, Posey, and Arroyo, three right hand batters for the Giants in the eighth against Reed. And a ground ball down to third. Wilmer with an extension and the turning throw. Got him. Rivera kept his foot on the bag and Pence is retired, one away. And the Giants will get on the phone with their replay coordinator to see whether they care to challenge. The only way he's safe is if he's off the base. Got him by the half step. That heel came up momentarily, but I think it got back down. He's there. He's good. Pence always hustling down that line. So one big out, and now another one to get for Reed with Posey at the plate. Posey a double and a home run tonight. Came into the night with only five extra base hits on the year, and he's tacked on a couple. Well, mistake right here in the six. Give the 3 2 lead for the Giants. Home run number three for Buster. Reed behind him, 2 0. Where the Reed and Posey used to be in the same division when Addison pitched for the Diamondbacks, and Posey has had his number four for seven with a home run against him. Here's a strike three and one. And Posey lifts one to shallow right. Easy for Jay Bruce. And two big outs for Addison Reed to start at the top of the eighth. Tonight's quote of the game presented by Investors Bank Banking in your best interest. Willie Mays said def defense to me is the key to playing baseball. Guy with 660 home runs saying that. <laughs> one 12 gold gloves. Had you by one. That's OK. I'll take a back seat. <laughs> Christian Arroyo swinging over the slider. Nothing in one. Derek Law is up in the Giants bullpen. And now it's 0 2. Back to back sliders from Reed. Trying to hand Christian Arroyo a golden sombrero. And this is what happens when you're a youngster in the major leagues. They make you prove you can hit the ball spinning. Quick pitch by Reed and another slider misses. One and two. Four straight sliders. Eduardo Nunez would be next. Two two coming hmm. off the plate with the fastball and now a full count to Arroyo. Keep in mind that Addison Reed has not walked about it this season. Went to three and zero on Posey came back to get him now he's gone three and two to Arroyo. Two out and nobody on and Arroyo strikes out for the fourth time tonight three two slider from Reed. Hmm. Give Arroyo the golden sombrero. Give Reed a one two three inning. Oh. And the Mets come up in the bottom of the eighth in a three three game. That'll drive you to the nearest bartender.
moment back when there were two ballparks just across the Harlem River Yankee Stadium on the top at 161st and River How about yeah. that and at the bottom the polo grounds at 155th and 8th so McCombs bridge is over here and then what's the bridge is that just an elevated I think that's a railroad bridge. railroad right bridge now. right yeah looks like a, by the Yankee Stadium it looks like a like a track field right there to the left of Yankee Stadium yeah that was always there remember they used to have handball courts right. uh, before they put up the parking lot that's right pay paradise Derek Law a real mainstay in the Giants bullpen he had a great rookie year last year he and Hunter Strickland have been the hottest pitchers in that bullpen hot the last 10 outings he's three and oh he's been their good luck charm with a save ERA under one last year was in 61 games as a rookie pitched to a 2.13 ERA in a year when everybody else in that bullpen was failing law really did a great job here's Neil Walker leading off the home eighth in a 3 3 game good job by Okert for the Gigantes Phase four retired them all with a couple of strikeouts. The Gigantes. <laughs> Jose Reyes on deck, then Rene Rivera in the eighth, and the curveball in for a strike from Law, one and one. Law's a four pitch guy out of the bullpen. Don't see too many of those. He's 26 years old. Grew up in Pittsburgh. Ooh, quick pitch. You see that? No uh, leg kick. So deception also by Mr. Law. He's got a nice curveball, a little 12 to 6. Sharp. Big broad shoulders. Laying down the law. In the air to center field. And Hernandez is right there. Now thinking about Derek Law growing up in Pittsburgh, they had a pretty good pitcher named Law in Pittsburgh back in the day. Vernon. Vernon Law. Vance's father, right? Uh -huh. um, what, what other teams on the road do not have? I mean, I know the Yankees, but is there any other teams that don't have their names on the back of their road uniform other than the Giants? What? But uh, the Yankees don't, right? They're the only ones. Oh, sorry, the Giants do have it. Do the Giants, Giants do, do that? The home uniform. Home uniforms, yeah. yeah sorry. Right. Of course, the Mets tried that for one year, and there was an uproar <laughs> back in 2000. Reyes lays off the curve ball and it's 2 and 0. Jose is 0 for 3 tonight. One hard hit ball when he lined out to the third baseman back in the fourth. I always like kind of having my name on my back. Did you run? You got a nice yeah. name. You had to, you know, you worked to the big leagues. Minor leagues, you didn't have your name on your back. Too high. And law behind on Reyes, 3 and 0. And Jose takes a walk. And with the second walk given up by the Giants pitching staff tonight, the Mets have the go ahead run at first with one out. Coming up tonight, Geico Sports Night. Latest on the Matt Harvey suspension situation. Rangers get set for game six, hoping to stay alive. And Jets news as well. Geico Sports Night tonight after the postgame. So here's Rivera. See if Reyes can get a read on Law. Maybe try and swipe a bag here. Three steals on the year for Jose. And Rivera takes a fastball strike. Rivera has had one career at bat against Derek Law and he had a base hit. Hmm. That's about hit the Giants eight to five looking to scratch out a run in the eighth and get themselves their first lead of the night. And the curveball drops in for a strike and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, nice curveball. Good curveball. He's very quick to the plate too. So kind of neutralizes any kind of running game. Although Jose really doesn't run too much anymore. Well Magaris on deck. Pitcher spot behind him and a limited bench tonight for Terry Collins. Unless as Dribble Cabrera is available to pinch hit, we'll find out. Fastball low and away, one and two. Oh, 
Otherwise, you've got Pawecki and Reynolds, and that's it. Granderson has already used the pinch hitter successfully, doubled in a run in the sixth. Reyes at first and one out. Law ahead on Rivera, one and two. Mm. Jose was leaning. Don't know if he was running, but he was leaning like he wanted to run. Posey sees it too. Just throw over. <laughs> he don't even need a sign. Throw over. <laughs> Boy, he's like a quarterback, isn't he? No disguising that. Curveball hit toward the whole base hit. Rene Rivera with his second hit of the night, and that moves that go ahead run to second base with one out. Boy, Rivera keeps hitting, Keith. He does, and uh, he's done a terrific job. Darno down and he's been getting a lot more playing time and he's been getting his base hits been in the middle of things. Think of Renee as an all or nothing hitter. That's what he's been in the past. Either hits a home run or strikes out. He's in 321 now with his two hits tonight. So now the go ahead run in scoring position. Juan Lagares at the plate and his dribble Cabrera is out on deck. Boy, when he left the field the other night, Saturday. I didn't think there was any way you'd see him three days later in the on deck circle. Lagaris takes the fastball inside. Figured torn ligament out a couple of months, yeah. but nope. Ligament's fine. Cabrera's on deck. And Law trying to find his way out of trouble in the eighth. Lagaris is 0 for 2. He's also been hit by a pitch tonight. And Law falls behind 2 and 0. Law does not walk people. Last year, 55 innings, nine walks. He's already walked one in this inning, and now he's behind Lagaris, 2 0. And Lagaris fouls back the fastball, 2 and 1. Garris had a 10 pitch marathon his last at bat against George Contos before grinding into a fielder's choice. One needs a big hit. Get him going. Outside ball three. Well, he's in a great spot here. Last thing in the world law wants to do is walk Lagaris and push that go ahead run to third. So you have to figure he gets a pretty good pitch to hit. I would think it's going to be a fastball. And um. it's too high ball four and the bases are loaded. So law walks two around the hit by Rivera. The bases are loaded. Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach will go to the mound and as Dribble Cabrera will come up to pinch hit. With a chance to get the Mets the lead in the bottom of the eighth. Well, Terry Collins with a limited bench, four guys on the bench, and he's had the right two. Well, this happened on Saturday night, and you didn't think there was any way we'd see him so quickly, but when he left the field with that thumb hanging. Tremendous pain. Right before the rain delay Saturday night, but X rays were negative. The MRI came back clear, and here he is with a chance to get the Mets the lead in the eighth inning. Josh Usich, the left hander, is up with the left hand hitting Conforto on deck. You know, as, as bad as things have been at times for the Mets, things have been worse for the Giants. And sometimes when you get on these rolls, this game can be very streaky, and a team that isn't playing well, sometimes. You almost expect bad things to happen. Giants trying to figure out where to play their infield. They're going to be halfway here. If you're any ground ball, you can have a pretty good chance of doubling up Cabrero, who doesn't run particularly well. Base is loaded, one out. And as Dribble takes a strike on the outside. Mm. Unusual. He's the first pitch fastball hitter, got it, but took it. Conforto on deck. 
fly ball would get the Mets the lead in this spot. Reyes with good speed at third, edging down the line, trying to draw the attention of Law. And Cabrera takes the off speed pitch for a strike, and it's 0 2. So Law, after walking Lagaris, quickly gets ahead on Cabrera. That first fastball may be the only good pitch he's had to hit in this at bat. We'll see what. Law does here. He's got pitches to waste. Reyes got to be ready for that curveball in the dirt. Golf foul. That'll go out of play. So there's the first swing by Cabrera. You know, you always wonder a guy with a thumb. How's that swing going to look? Well, remember, uh, well, you were telling me before the game, Juan Lagares hurt his thumb and was able to play for a while until he finally had it repaired. And he knew he had it torn all along. Cabrera fighting from behind. And Good he lays eye. off the curveball, one and two. Good eye right there. Got to be going up the middle here, protecting the plate, and even inside out a fly ball put your team ahead. I think he's going to double up on the curveball. That is his best pitch, and he needs a strikeout. On a ground ball, Lagares has to go hard into second. But that infield's so short, if they get a ground ball, double play is going to be hard not to turn. Here's the one two. Slap to short, might be two. The flip to panic and on to first, and the Giants do turn the double play that gets Law through the inning. 6 4 3. And the Mets are turned aside in the bottom of the eighth. Watch every SNY Mets game on the go on any device all season long with live streaming presented by Verizon. Just download the NBC Sports app or visit SNY.tv, your new home for live streaming coverage of every SNY Mets game. Ninth inning, Jerry Familia comes on for the Mets. Terry Collins was asked about Familia. He felt confident that he was back to where he was before. Sharpness of the sinker, good breaking ball. We'd like to still see him throw more of that split finger change, but. Uh, at least sinker is back to where he was last year. He had a seven pitch one two three ninth inning save on Friday night against the Marlins. In a one run game now comes into a tie game in the ninth. Eduardo Nunez at the plate. Michael Morris has come out on deck to pinch hit. And then Gorky Hernandez for the Giants in the ninth. 
Here's Morris recently returned to San Francisco where he was uh, an integral part of their last World Series title. Came back in a big way too with a home run. Nunez first pitch swinging flies one to shallow left Reyes out to call one pitch and one out for Familia. So now it's Morris whose career looked like it was over. Yeah. But his uh, return to be a productive bench player for the Giants and you mentioned the, the home run that he hit when he returned. How about the reaction. Yeah. His and his teammates reaction when he hit that home. Well run. he is a, a, a favorite kind of teammate guy as Melanson gets up for the Giants. And uh, you know I think it's a culmination of what you're talking about. It, it was his career over. I mean he went to Miami and then to Pittsburgh he had uh, played in six games last year for the Pirates and it looked like he was done. But here he is at age 35. Three for 18 since coming back to the Giants. And Morris gets under one to left should stay in the ballpark. And Fordo at the edge of the warning track for the second out didn't miss by much. Two out and nobody out. Let's check in with the studio see what's coming up on WB Mason post game live Gary Apple and Todd Zeal guys. All right, gentlemen. Here's Gorky Hernandez. So Familia has gotten the his last five outs on ten pitches. Now that's efficient. Efficient, but boy, Morse yeah. just missed hitting at 500 feet. Yes, he did. <laughs> Hernandez 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. And he bounces one toward the middle. Reyes gets the big hop. Side retired. So familiar with a five pitch top of the ninth gets him out one two three. That's a lot the top of the order in the bottom of the ninth trying to win it in walk off fashion. Michael Conforto will lead off the last of the ninth for New York. 
Conforto, TJ Rivera, and Jay Bruce against the left hander Josh Osich. Well, Osich had a high ERA uh, last year in 59 games for the Giants, but he held left handers to a 156 average. That's why he is in there. He was recalled about a week ago, but his numbers for the Sacramento River Cats was not very good. Conforto, one for three and a walk tonight at a base hit off the left hander Matt Moore back in the fifth, and he goes after the first pitch sinker, nothing and one. The River Cats? The River Cats, Sacramento. And Sacramento? Why wouldn't they have where the gold rush started? Thing. Sutter's Mill. Sutter's Mill. Could have been something regarding tomato juice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could have called them the Schwarzeneggers. There you go. That would have been fun. There you go. No, they couldn't use the 49ers. They already used the Pan Handlers. Curve ball. This is inside to Conforto. Two and one. Mets twice have come back to tie this game. They've never led. TJ Rivera on deck. And then Jay Bruce against the left hander Osich. Away and now it's three and one. Mm. Well, Conforto's already been on base twice. He's got a tremendous on base percentage in the leadoff spot. And he's, he's a leadoff right here. It's very critical for him to get on base. There are two Oregon State Beavers going head to head. Conforto against Osich. Inside, ball four, and Conforto's on base to start the bottom of the ninth. Third time Michael's been on base tonight. So one Beaver. Oh, walks the other. Hitting a couple of walks for Conforto. Oh. They were never teammates at Oregon State. Osage came out in 2011, which is four years after the Mets drafted a relief pitcher from Oregon State. Remember Eddie Coons? Yes, I do. First round pick. Right hander, split finger, a little last, sinking fastball. Lasted four games in the majors. Here's TJ Rivera. See if the Mets are bunting. And he was. Thought maybe they would not with the lefty on the mound and Bruce on deck. The, the Giants really thought that uh, Rivera didn't pull the bat back in time. He did. Osage got a little. Like a little disc. Uh, he got a little upset with that one. The call. Lack of call. He thought it was a strike. TJ had a run scoring double in the fifth that tied the game. Showing bunt again. And it's 2 and 0. Keith, this could be your first Archie Bell. Mm, the goal, the tighten up. No. Well, giant relievers have walked three of the last five Met batters. Derek Law was able to get out of a jam in the eighth with a double play, but now Osich in instant jeopardy with a leadoff walk to Conforto. You can take the bunt off here and give him a hit sign. Fastball hitter. And he does swing and fouls it back. Are you given the signs from up here? Is that your new job? <laughs> Did it from first base. Why wouldn't he do it from here? He's doing it like Paul Revere. Two lanterns, one by land, two of by sea. <laughs> do it with Tootsie Pops instead. <laughs> one, one, one for a fastball, two for a bunt. Two and one to TJ Rivera. And TJ pops it up. Oh, ball three. Nunez calling for it. Mm. Well, struggles with it, but that's the first out. See, in those circumstances, what you're trusting your hitter to do, and this is a young hitter, so you don't know if he's going to do it or not, is on that 2 1 count, if it's not a strike, you're not going to swing at it. And he did. That happens sometimes for a, a younger hitter who's overly aggressive. So now Jay Bruce, who's had three career at bats against Osage, two for three with a home run. He's one for four tonight. Conforto at first and one out, last of the night, 3 3 game. Not much of a move for Osage, so Conforto can put that in his back pocket.
not over shifting against Bruce in this spot with the lefty on the mound. And the curveball inside. Could have leaned into that one. You know, we had a shot there of Brandon Belt who stands in front of the bag. You have to be aware that on a pickoff throw to first, he sometimes drops that foot in front of the bag. See how far he is in front of it? Sometimes blocking the runner to go back to first. Just a short lead for Conforto. And Bruce drives one. Deep right center. Back in the gap goes Pence. He has room to make the catch. Bruce did not quite get all of it. And Pence able to go back and get it for the second out. And now Bruce Bochy's on its way to the mound. It was Wilmer Flores due up. He wants a right hander in the game. So Osich will exit. Hunter Strickland will come in. 3 3 bottom of the ninth. We'll be right back. Well, Hunter Strickland comes out of the bullpen for the Giants to try and get the last out in the bottom of the ninth. And those numbers don't lie. He's been that good. We said that Law has been outstanding out of that bullpen. So has Strickland. Right handed hitters, two for 22 off him. Mm. And they're coming to face the right hand batter, Wilmer Flores, who's one for four tonight. So a leadoff walk to Conforto, but Osich able to retire the next two. And now Flores against a tough right hander. Strickland straight over the top throws a really hard. Good overhand breaking ball too. Yeah, Wilmer takes a strike. Nothing in one. Strickland the sixth San Francisco pitcher of the night. He was a rookie in 2014 when the Giants won it all. He had a memorable postseason, but not in a good way. No. Says a lot about him that he's rebounded and become one of their best relievers now. Morris fouls it off. It's amazing when you think about it. He gave up six home runs in that postseason. One of their key relievers gives up six home runs in one postseason, and they still won the World Series. They decided to pitch one guy almost all the innings. Well, that all helped the game. too. They didn't use Strickland in the last game. <laughs> <laughs> 
Flores down in the count 0 and 2. Up the middle off the leg of the pitcher. Arroyo can't make the bare hand play and everybody's safe. Well it would have gone up the middle for a base hit anyway had it not hit strictly. But off his leg it slowed it down and Arroyo couldn't pick it up. Nice hitting by Wilmer stays in hit him on the calf. A little inexperienced by Arroyo he doesn't know that Wilmer can't run very well. Uh, and tries to barehand it when he could have picked it up with his glove, made it a little easier. So it's an infield hit for Flores, his second hit of the night, and now the winning run in scoring position with two down, and Neil Walker at the plate. A little bit of chance for a left hand hitter against Hunter Strickland. Walker tonight, one for four, an RBI double back in the first. Conforto at second, Flores at first, and two out. And Walker takes the slider for ball one. Conforto needs to get a good lead and come off strong and aggressively at second base. The outfield is in shallow. The giant outfield. Where they really are. Mm. One and oh to Walker. And a slider for a strike, one and one. Well, they got some good arms in the outfield. Ruggiano, who's come in, he's got a very accurate arm. Hernandez is a real good outfielder and charges the ball extremely well. And Hunter Pence, although it's an awkward throw, hard to believe, um, he's very accurate and has a good arm. Conforto has the shortstop Arroyo playing right behind him. You've got to trust your third base coach here and get a good lead and come off. One and one to Walker and Neal fouls it away and again Strickland gets ahead in the count. He was 0 and 2 on Flores before the infield hit now he's 1 and 2 on Walker Jose Reyes would be next. One two coming and Walker wastes it away. Again, the one two. And Walker mm. pounds that slider into the ground. Still one and two. Well, they're down and in slider. There's a little room because Belt's on the line between he and Panic. That slider, if it's it on the ground, will be in that direction. Well, we've certainly seen tonight the Giants do not shift the way a lot of teams do. Playing fairly straight up against Walker, leaving that hole open. Mets have had 10 hits tonight. They need one more. One two from Strickland. And Walker rips one down the right field line. Base hit of the Mets win the ball game. Conforto comes in to score the winning run. Neil Walker with a walk off hit. Walker drives in the first Met run. He drives in the last Met run. And the Mets have their first walk off victory of the season as they beat the Giants 4 to 3. Ronnie went back to the slider and did not get it in. He hung it over, had a good break, but it was over the middle and down. And the clutch hitting right there by Walker. He needed that one. Two RBI night for him. Third career walk off hit for Neil Walker. You know, we mentioned his average isn't high, but he's been hitting well with runners in scoring position. He did it twice tonight. Got the Mets their first run, and he gives the Mets their first lead of the game. 
And it's a walk off win for New York as the Mets have now won seven of their last ten to get back to within a game of 500. Nine outs by the Mets bullpen last time familiar face San Francisco you got the loss this time the win. You see they wanted it back door slider and it came it was down out of the strike zone low but over the middle and Conforto can just easily score on this two outs on the get go. That's a, just a nice win by the Mets with the Nationals losing the night in Baltimore. Five and a half behind. And he gets the sunflower seed treatment. Neil Walker's first walk off hit as a Met. And it comes in the opener of the three game series against the Giants as the Mets pull this one out, coming from behind two separate times and winning it in the bottom of the ninth, four to three. Game summary presented by StubHub. Jacob DeGrom struck out 11. Four times in his last five starts, he struck out 10 or more. Familia. A 1 2 3 ninth for the win, and Walker with the walk off hit. For every Mets win, the Mets organization is proud to contribute $2,500 to Northwell Health and the Katz Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit northwell.edu slash Katz. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $37,500. Drive around the majors presented by Audi. Kevin Gosman gets the win as the Orioles win the first of their interleague series on the Beltway with the Nationals. Marcus Stroman leads the Jays over the Indians, and Carlos Martinez gets the victory as the Marlins fall nine to four. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by FiOS by Verizon. FiOS is not cable; we're wired differently. Visit getfiOS.com today. By Jeep, hurry in for great deals now during the Jeep Memorial Day sales event going on now. And by New York Lottery, play Champions of Cash, the new scratch off from the New York Lottery. Get the ticket and download the New York Lottery 3D app to play on your phone. Final score tonight the Mets four and the Giants three. Game two of this series tomorrow night, Zach Wheeler against Jeff Samarja. Our coverage begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow night right here on SNY. Mets with their first walk off victory of the season as Neil Walker gets the two out game winning hit off Hunter Strickland in the bottom of the ninth and the Mets who trailed and then tied twice get the win in the bottom of the ninth inning to take the opener of the series from the Giants now for Keith Hernandez Ron Darling Steve Gelbs and our entire crew I'm Gary Cohen at City Field time for WB Mason post game live let's join Gary Apple and Todd Zeal.